um, there can only be uh, one reason, one real reason that my guest tonight said yes to, yes? Yes, because he has a lisp. No, that's me. Said yes to being on the whip. Um, we're both Leos. <laughs> and if we were to team up, we could call ourselves 7-Eleven. I know. It's funnier than, it was funnier in my head. But, because uh, I know the truth also. It's, he's here because he likes freaks, right? Well, hello, boys and girls. Hi. What a wonderful day it is today in our money-based economy. Well, sit back and relax and get ready for the guy who's about to ruin everything. I'm puzzled. Uh, are you really seriously suggesting that Jesus Christ was a mushroom? Wait. Jesus was a mushroom, Roberts. Yes. You are dealing with a, a secret cult, a secret society. Welcome to Waning Interest. Welcome, welcome to the Waning Interest podcast, number uno uno cuatro, May 20th, 2023, the babbling dabbler, the smallest click on the internet, the pinball brain in your favorite machine. It's like a diary or a book, but not as stale or coherent. <laughs> anyway, from a more mentally challenged Forrest Gump, but as I've said many times before, and you know it, the whips know it, I'm like if Mikey and Mouth from the Goonies had a baby, played a lot of bareback leapfrog, and then pfft, I was there. And it was a weird thing because it was only like five months, the gestation period. It's kind of strange. Um, but this evening, wow, this is fun. What a pre, what a pre-show, pre-show. It's not a show. It's a thing. It's a, it's a conversation. It's a, it's a podcast. It's a, but there's no such thing as pods anymore, even though it's really confusing. <coughs> and that's why um, I like to bring people in to help with the confusion. Um, you know, people like that write books. You know, smart fuckers. You know, and luckily this one I've met before, um, long time ago, somehow he, uh, had this weird notion to come up to me after a screening and went, I like your work. And I went, you, you like freaks. And then I realized, holy shit, that's the guy from, from Carnival. Holy fuck. Anyway, stupid writer's tricks, tips, hints, riffs, and rants, Gingerland Substack. If you want to go uh, find out if you're if you're a sub stacker, I'm not. Uh, I'm really fucking tired of all the different things. All of, uh, but I have read some of Daniel's stuff. Anyway, let's just fucking bring Dan on and let me stop fucking babbling. How about that? Wouldn't that Hi. be better, Dan? Oh God, he's so small, like a I'm freak. I'm tiny. I'm tiny. <laughs> How are you, brother? I'm doing good, man. I'm God. Doing good. I just I moved two weeks ago been trying to get used to this new place and uh my office used to be a room and now it's sort of like an open area off of the living room so i can hear it. yeah you know <laughs> don't close the cabinet so loud kid i'm on the radio baby <laughs> Did you hear that? oh we're already starting with laughs i fucking love it i'm already um yeah. Her I'm name like, is Federica and she's an outlaw. An outlaw? Oh god, yes. Is that is she in a band or something? What do you mean? No, she's just an outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> she's she could be terrifying. <laughs> How she's old? Ten years old. Man. Ten. Yeah. I remember those days. Mine's yeah. twenty two now. Oh God. I got a fifteen year old in the house too. That's a real barrel of life. You really started late, brother. Oh no, I got, I got, I got. I oh got, no, yeah, no, I got you got five Charles. Kids, man. Yeah, Charles. How old is Charles? He's he's almost forty. Yeah. Almost forty, and you yeah. and uh, you wrote, you guys wrote uh, some Iron Man and some Eternal stuff for comics together. Wow, God, you, yeah, you've done your homework, man. I'm That's, impressed. That is fuck. No, well, it's not color that. me impressed. Yeah, we did. We color did me man. impressed. That's we awesome. did Iron Man for 27, uh, 27, uh, 27 issues. We also did a did did a uh, the Eternals. Although Charlie pretty much did that, I, I I was I took a back seat to Charlie on that one. 
I know nothing about the Eternals. Yeah, I didn't. Either. I didn't even watch the the MCU movie. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was kind of interesting. It, Marvel after Carnival said you can do any character you want, and I said I just don't want to do any character that has little wings on his head or on his ankles, and because <laughs> that just messes with me. And so they said, well, who who would be good? And I thought, well, you know, I like Iron Man because Iron Man's completely, literally, like self made. It's like a guy who just had enough scratch to build a suit. It's not, he didn't, he didn't, you know, he, he didn't get bitten by a spider, you know, and he's, he didn't come from a, 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 a plant, another planet, you know, he's just this dude. I and mean, he's like, it's like Batman. Yeah. Iron Man right. was always kind of like Marvel's Batman anyway. Right. So, um, but he, he wasn't, you know, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't think the character was that embittered, not like Bruce Wayne. He wasn't psychotic, you know? No, he's a drunk. Yeah. And, and so um, I, I, I realized something, and that is every time somebody's I – know, I know about fandom because I was a fan. I, was a, I didn't get into, the, into show business until I was like 42 years old. Right. Okay? So I was a consumer of the product much longer than I've been a purveyor of the product. And so I understood – Fans and I understood the the, the, the mindset. But how long and, before you got in the business though? How long had you been writing? Well, I started writing again after a stint in a mental hospital. <laughs> Synchronicities, baby. Tell me it's tell me it was all of you. What? Tell me it was all of you. No, it was. Uh, oh, what was the name of the place? It was. In I was Pasadena. in all of you. It was really nice. Oh well, lucky we used you. to call it club medication. <laughs> Dude, they wouldn't let me go outside because I wouldn't take the medication. No, they, they, this, you could, I wasn't in a closed unit, you know, I went in for depression and, and so I was 27 years old. What happened is I, I got married very young. I was 22. I started working in the insurance business while I was in college to pay my way through college. And it was a family business. My dad kept saying, Hey, you got to finish college. Hey, you got to finish college. And then you know, he said, oh, okay, look, you're working at Parsons Engineering in the payroll department. I'll pay you what you're being paid, which was like $800 a month or 800. Yeah, it's like 800 a month. And, was and a lot he said, I'll pay you what you're, you're getting here and I'll, you can, you know, schedule classes so you can finish college. So I said, okay. So I, I went to work in the insurance business and at a certain point it was like, you know, I, I just listened to all the people around me. And they all, you know, you just society in general. It's like, yeah, who, you know, who, who wants to be a writer? Like, like, like that's just like I want to be an astronaut type of territory. I want to be president. You know that? Who wants to? You know, I didn't have a lot of. There weren't a lot of people in the arts in my family. A bunch of insurance guys, and the generation before that was a bunch of lawyers and. And, um, so I, I said, you know, that's, that, that I, I'll put aside childhood, you know, childhood things, childish things, and I'll just dive into the insurance business. And it, it took me about, um, about six, seven years to find myself dangerously suicidal. And, and what I realized when I went, when I checked myself in the next, I mean, within, I mean, minutes of arriving, I started writing and I hadn't written since I graduated from college, and and, uh, and I'd, I'd done quite a lot of writing in college. And I and I started writing again, and I realized, you know what, being a writer is not um, something you choose to do. It's something that's just your brain is it's hard baked into your brain, and it's like if you're, and it's the same not just being a writer, being an artist of any kind. You, it's not an it's 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 not a vocation. It's, it's, it's more of something that you have to do. And if you don't do it, you get very, very, very unhappy. And, um, and, and, uh, and so it, there's no choice, you know, I mean, when people come up to me, I mean, when people say, Oh yeah, you know, I've always wanted to be a writer. I've always wanted to write something. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, I've always wanted to be a hummingbird. You know, I mean, look, you, if you're a writer, you write. If you're an actor, you act. If Do you're it. a dancer, you dance. If you're Do a painter, it. you paint. Mm -hmm. And it's and, and the problem is, and I can't figure out what to paint. It's like I, I can't figure out how to stop painting. 
you know, and so, you know, the choice isn't that much, uh, that it's not about choosing to be an artist because you just, your head works differently, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and it's mostly, I think a lot, a lot of it has to do with pattern recognition, you know, mm. where you just notice things, put things together and, and laugh about them and go the f- and some the people are looking at you because you're the lunatic who's laughing at nothing and then you have to try to explain oh yeah see that guy see the bus bench the realtor on the bus bench and i see the the billboard above it and she's kind of looking down at him and he's kind of looking up at her isn't that funny and you know it's like oh, they, you're still a lunatic <laughs> that's the sh- kind of sh- that's the kind of stuff i notice man you know that's why you know the yeah the, the mushroom stuff or like i don't know if you probably uh, you I haven't listened to or watched many whips oh, probably, but I, I have one where mushroom it's, story, right? Well, we're going to get there, but yeah, because well, I have a thing where I'd start, I noticed watching ET for the 45th time, I think it was wow. and being, and now being a tripper and learning a lot about mycology and all, and the Jesus mushroom stuff. And I looked, I watched ET and I'm like, it's all through this movie. ET is all about DMT and mushrooms. He kind of looks like a mushroom. He looks like a cross between a mushroom and a toad, right? <laughs> I never did the DMT, DMT thing, from but the I've toad. always wanted to do the DMT. I, just I haven't, haven't done it either. I haven't done it either. But, uh, and I don't want to go down to South America and bang a drum and do all D- that shit. Well, yeah, you don't have to do yeah. it that far. No, you could do it right there. Uh, you can do it in your house. I've seen, watch people do it. I haven't yeah. done it, though. But uh, but DMT, you know, the E.T. Elliot. E- yeah. Dude. Look at at the beginning of the movie, the whole thing, that whole, I realized the whole thing was showing Peter Coyote's fucking keys, where you just see the keys. He's yeah. t- Stephen or whoever, I don't know, not Melissa, because she wrote it, right? Melissa Matheson it was. Yeah. Um, uh, but the key, it's telling you right at the beginning, this is a key. This this movie is a giant key. And then what do you see? <laughs> E.T. is I in the dirt. I think, e. T. yeah, but see, here's the thing is. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me finish this thing. Open the movie. She put that in. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know yeah. where it came from because I don't know. It, but let me let me just just the open of the movie, right? I know I've said this many times in the whip, and some whips are sick of it, but some are like, "No, do it." I, they, I get both. Uh, I love this talk. Um, right after you see the keys, ET's fingers are playing in the dirt where mushrooms grow out of, un, around pine trees, and you see them all communicating through their heart. When you're tripping on mushrooms you, with somebody, you're communicating through your heart. Then they cut into the fucking ship, and there's two different kinds of mushrooms in the ship. Now, let's jump to, let's just, now, now, there's a whole bunch of others, but I'll just jump to the end, the, the big note, the big scene that we, everybody knows, when, when the, when all the kids start flying on the bikes. Yeah. Like, like reindeer. Yeah. Reindeer, they're, what's the favorite snack of the caribou in Siberia? The Amanita <laughs> muscaria mushroom. Well, that's why reindeers can fucking fly. So now we've got uh, uh, these kids are flying, right? E.T. is wrapped in a white blanket, and Elliot's wearing a red hoodie. And where are they going? They're going, and they land in the pine forest where the Amanita muscaria grow. And the fucking ship looks like a mushroom. Yeah. But we already saw it anyway. But there's other stuff throughout it. Ego death. The whole ego death thing, when E.T. is supposedly dead, and he wakes up and says, phone home. That's an ego death metaphor. Just like Elliot, he was dressed up as a dead person for Halloween. Before that, when they first went on his first trip, he was kind of having an ego death. That's why, because he was dressed in the Halloween thing, and then he was all sick, and then he recovered. E.T. gets sick, and then the whole, that was ego death. Phone home. When you have a super, super trip, especially on DMT, you are fucking phoning home. And that's what I feel like when I trip. And also tripping helps. <laughs> it's all about the healing. You know, Jesus you was a some, mushroom. You're doing some serious intellectual cherry picking there, my friend. Dude, well, it's all about the... Yeah, see, I hear, here's it, the dude, thing. It all, started, it all started with, yeah. I can't get rid of the fucking virgin birth thing. Uh, that's why I said, Mikey and Mouth from the Goonies. I'm Mikey. Uh, this is my one-eyed willy. Huh, mushrooms look like dicks. Funny. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, I can't get rid of the fucking virgin birth shit and adults walking around thinking that this Jesus thing was real and was born of a virgin, died, blah, blah, blah. But I can't fuck this. And luckily, my friend Jeff Oliver Madley Clark, who I kicked out of my studio twice talking Jesus was a mushroom because I was like, dude, crazy, fuck it, whatever. You're not bothering me, but I got work to do. And then I went, and then he talked about the, G- the virgin birth. He explained it. Mushrooms don't have seeds. They're spores. 
Jesus was born of a virgin? Yeah. In a manger? In a pile of cow shit. Died for me so I could chew his ass up and shake hands with the universe and feel well, healed. I'm not going near any of that. <laughs> it's so <laughs> simple. I'm not it's even touching so that. Simple. It's I, so I'm simple. I'm not touching that, Wayne. You, it's just, you, you might be trying to draw me in. I'll tell you, I'll tell <laughs> I you what. I had, I, here's That's the, thing the about, best because people do think I'm in a cult. Seeing, no cult would have me. And people interpreting things is, is when I did Carnival, the first episode, um, I remember I said, where does it take place? And I wanted it to be in Dust Bowl. And I had this map of the Dust Bowl. It was an old map. And I sort of like, sort of eyeballed sort of the towns. And, oh, I like the sound of this one. It was this little tiny town called Milfay, right? And I said, oh, I like that. So I, the first episode of Carnival was called Milfay. Right. Milfay. I just rewatched. And so then somebody calls me or somebody sent, puts something up on the internet. And they go, Oh, yeah, of course it's Milfay. Milfay is an anagram for family. And that's where Ben finds his family. And and I'm going, oh, yeah, of course. I was thinking that. Because <laughs> that, then I'm a genius. Then I'm so sort of like. That wasn't you. Know, you? Like if I'm thinking, I'm, I'm struggling to finish. You know, Are you serious? That wasn't on purpose? You know, people, when I was in college, we, you know, they would, oh, you know, what was Hemingway thinking? And what, what was, what was, what was, what was you know, what was Crane thinking? What was Twain thinking? What was, you know, what were they thinking when they wrote this line or this, this, this chapter or what, what this, you know, you know what they were thinking? They were thinking, I gotta get this fucker done. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to pay the family. I, I can't feed the family if I don't get, that's what it is. You're just right. got to get it done. And I got to get it done because if I don't get it done, I'm not going to be able to start the next thing, which I think I like better than this thing. You know, and then it's later and, on you start finding the synchronicities. I do that with the yeah, with well, the that's web. because you've got the story well. And my feeling is you've got the story well, and it consists of everything you've seen, heard, experienced, anything you've seen on TV, and anything you've had in real life. And you draw your material out of the story well, and 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 that, or rather, it kind of emerges from the story well. And what it, the medium upon which that stuff comes up, the oil that geysers up out of the story. Well, I don't know what that is because then there's things that I know aren't in the story. Well, that turn up in the material. Like mm. I'll look at it and I'll go, well, who the hell wrote that? Like, that's just, I don't that I'm having a deja you know. vu right now, by the way. Yeah. I, I bet you would because I, most writers experience those. I, I mean, most real writers, I mean, hacks probably don't because they're just going, Hey, you know, we're going to have a real, this is going to be a breaking bad moment. You know, it's like, I don't, mm. my head doesn't work that way. My, my head works. Oh yeah. I used to fuck in the, in the writer's room. I'd fuck with them. I'd go, Oh yeah, this is a real knife in the water moment. Yeah. I'd start kicking out like obscure French films. Yes, everybody's going, oh, yeah, this is going to be a man on fire moment. This is going to be a Breaking Bad moment. This is going to be the, the favorite one in writers' rooms is the, uh, is, you know, it's like you know, Die Hard is a big favorite, you know. We're going to do Die Hard. And it's like, yeah, you're going to do Die Hard on 1 20th the budget with people who are 150% as talented as the people who did Die I mean, shut up. You're not going to be doing Die Hard. And we all saw Die Hard, and it was good the first time. Are you going to make mm. it better? Because if you're not going to make it better, why bother? You know. Um, so I don't know writers' room. Little synchronicity. Weird. My stepfather, yeah, with his truck, delivered a bunch of stuff back in the '90s to John McTiernan. A whole bunch of things for a new kitchen. Yeah. At his place in, uh, I don't remember where they went. Was it Wyoming? Yeah. Colorado. No, it was Colorado. He, and my mom went with him, and she rode with him, and they went to John McTiernan's one of his houses. It was like in the '90s. Anyway, just to say. Ah, so in any case. But wait, but wait, did, so you didn't mean to name that? You didn't? No, know, you I didn't, didn't even know. No, I picked it because it was it was just a nice name. I like the name, and so what a fucking trip that you. Yeah, and and man. so and so you know, but it's on some le it's how could I accidentally do that? You know, I, well, I, I well, mean, how did I accidentally pick an anagram for family? I mean. Uh, on Mr. Anagram level, himself sitting over my yeah, shoulder. Yeah, on some level, Mr. Mojo my mind Rising. Process. That's why the name Milfay was attractive to me. There was something that I was Milfs. That, oh, you, know, you have mommy issues. Head, maybe that was. I don't know. 
But I like MILFs. Time, I've always liked MILFs myself. You can't be thinking about symbolism when you're writing, and you can't even be thinking about themes when you're writing. I don't think you If would. you start writing, I mean, if, if you're writing and you've got the theme in your head, then you're an, like an actor who's, who's, who's trying to play the subtext. You, you can't. Mm-hmm. It's awful then. It's mm-hmm. just, it's, so what you do is you come up with a ripping yarn, something that's really good that drags people through and it's a good story. And it's usually later where you go, oh, yeah, I get it. This is what I was really writing about. But you don't know when you're doing it. Because if you did, you would never you'd never finish anything. You know? Yeah. You know? I've only finished uh, uh, two scripts, and they were both shorts. Uh-huh. Um, and I actually filmed one of them back in 05 when I was at uh, uh, Playhouse West. Yeah. And Playhouse West started. Hey, guys. To, yeah. You have to keep it down. Please. 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 Shh. Thank you. No more. Okay. Pasta. Up. <laughs> Silencio. <laughs> I know them Italian. I'm, I'm, I'm part WAP. <laughs> I'm my my grandmother's last name was Simonelli. Oh, mine is Schmidt. Schmidt. Oh, that's right, that's right. No. And then you use that name. Was it? What was it that you used? Didn't you? Don't you write under a pen name with that? Uh, I think. Yeah, I might have used one of them. Um, Some Schmidt. Isn't there something? Yeah, that you wrote that, a pen name was under Tal- William Talbot Schmidt or Smith. Yeah, uh, that's it. When I was doing my homework, yeah. right? Yeah. Um. Anyway, where were we? Sorry. Yes. Where were we? <laughs> oh, the matter. milf out the the milfs. You're into milfs, just like me. The milf. <laughs> what are you talking about, milfs? We weren't even. We weren't well, the, the, even no, it's, 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 milfs. that's what comes into my head when you say the the town from from oh, Carnival. Milf a milf a milf a. I like uh, moms. Was, I've always been it's an anagram in, for into family. The, I've always there been into the I've always been into the mature ladies. So it's the milf joke that I was making. I just I. I've always been I into like, older. I women. like women. I don't like girls very much. Yeah, uh, yeah. I really like women, and um, it's funny because it's like, um, you know, people, you know, oh yeah, this will be super politically incorrect and everything. But the okay, if a guy gets mugged, right? What do you say? He's like, did he get the Rolex? <laughs> you know, they take your car keys. They get the Porsche. You know, they, you know, it's like. If a woman gets mugged, it's like, did he try to rape you? Mm. You know, did, did he beat you? Men are stuff people. Women are people people. I get on the phone with my best friend, Art, and I'll talk to him for an hour and a half. And my wife will ask me, so how's Art? And I'll say, I don't know. I guess he's okay. He didn't bring anything up, you know? I mean, the first words, that's why when you're in a relationship with a woman, one second. One second. I'm going to have to. Guys? Da, do, 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 da, do, do, do. We'll be right back, folks. That was my daddy voice. <laughs> so, now where was I? Um, I don't I have no idea what I was just saying. I was so distracted. Was where were we? Your art. Your friend Art. On the oh, phone. yeah. So, you know, I can talk to him for like half an hour and I have no idea. He could be dying of cancer for all I know. <laughs> but see, that's the thing is if you're a guy and I get Art on the phone, you know, I'll go, hey, Art, how you doing? He's going to go, oh, man, I just got back to the doc- from the doctor. He just diagnosed me. We lead with that. We don't yeah. sit there and hang back and go, oh, by the way, I just got diagnosed with cancer. Um, women, though, when they come out of the shoot, it's like, how are you? How are the kids? How's this? How's this? Yeah. How's this? And how's your mom? Did she get over a cold? I mean, yeah. <laughs> and and so they're they're about people, and 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 men and women are are you know it's like women in the in the world of in the world of relationships and emotions and that kind of thing. They're like dolphins in that world. Oh, horny. They're like do- dolphins in that sea, that sea of emotion. You know, they swim beautifully. They know their way around. They have no problem navigating that particular Most. environment. Men are like monkeys in the ocean. We're just flashing around. We, you know, we don't know that the relationship's ending. <laughs> you know, it's like, 
<laughs> it's like, I mean, women, they can see that the relationship is ending three blocks away. And the guy is basically running the relationship into a wall and he's three feet away and he doesn't know the relationships. And women just, they know this is going to work or this isn't going to work, you know? And then, you know, I think they get themselves in trouble when they say, I want to try to make this work. I want to try to make this person different than who he is or who she is. And, 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 and I think whenever anybody engages in that, it's dangerous and stupid. People are who they are. You can't change them. You can't make them different. You, you, you know, you get, you know, oh yeah, I got, I got married and my, my wife was a, was a drug addict. And then I got married again and the second wife was a drug addict. It's like, uh, this really isn't about your wife. It's about you. you <laughs> yeah. You're attracted to people who are, who are broken and you have a feel, you, you feel maybe like being Prince Charming and, you know, coming and rescuing them. And I remember doing that in my twenties. Most young men do, you know, and they get over it. They get over it because yeah. they lo- what they learn is, you know, the princess doesn't want, she doesn't want to be rescued. She's not interested in being rescued. And or it's the uh, Bill Hicks song, uh, Chicks Dig Jerks. <laughs> yeah, this is true, too. This is true, too. I'm going to yeah, do a what I've podcast heard is about Bill. Takers and givers. Takers are attracted to givers because they, they take everything from them. And givers are attracted to takers because givers love to give things to people. Um, and when I went, when I got married the second time, it was like, I said, I'm going to turn that on its head and I'm going to find another giver. Cause I, I already went through this thing with the taker. And the weird thing is it's like, it's like mag- magnets, you know, like they yeah. don't, it's hard to find. Like if you're a giver, it's hard to hook up with another giver because they're boring. You, you know, they go, Oh, you're boring. You're not this guy who's going to take everything from me. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and so it was hard. To, it was hard to find a match, um, and but I managed to, you know, and he, and and that's just a better situation, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, it's been a while. I've I'm been sounding single. like Doctor Phil or some shit. Let's get, no, let's no, get no. Off of this. Yeah. No, it's kind of cool because that's not something that's normally talked about here on the Whip. But yeah. I've been single, fucking. Let's get back to mushrooms then. Twenty twenty three. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to tell you, I was, I was, I was, I, one of my friends is... Uh, my mushroom talk is one of the reasons I've been single for eight years. <laughs> well, she, well, see here, I, I grew up in the 70s. And so I did every drug under the sun, except for heroin. But I mean, I did opium and I smoked opium. Same. Uh, I've done it once. All the way through the 70s, it was all available. And then I got married and I had kids and it's like, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. And, uh, and so then I, my kids grew up and then I was, found myself single and I was like, oh, well, you know, I was going out with this woman who was just a massive pothead and she's a country Western singer. And wow, she, this is she, sexy she so far. She so much weed. It was unbelievable. She was Female smoking Willie. me out of house and home, man. I was like, let's go to the weed store. Shit, I just bought you like, you know I mean? Jeez, how'd you go through that so fast? Because I'm a lightweight. I'm a cheap date when it comes to weed. And and so she thought me difference. Okay, oh yeah, the reason you don't you've had you have bad experience. See, you're not a sativa person, you know. You're you're a uh, what is the other one? Indica. Indica. You're an indica guy. And I, oh yeah, and that makes all the difference in the world, you know. Um, I don't get paranoid, I don't get combative. I mean Dude. sativa, I get combative. I I, I get I turn into a, just sort of a raging asshole with sativa. Well, th- that's the thing with when uh, when I was a kid, and I, that's one of the things I couldn't figure out when I was a kid because back here in Maine before, you know, when I, I grew up where I am now, and you didn't know what you were getting back then, right? Nah. So I would like to my, my stepbrother, because well, we would smoke together, um, and we would always get busted from our, by our parents. <laughs> but uh, uh, I was yeah, like, dude, why it. is it like the last two times Everything I was, everything was cool and everything. But what? And, the, and then that time, that last time, I was like, I felt like I had done cocaine. I, I was paranoid, and I yeah. want, and, and, and all I, I had to, to get it out of my head. I had to move around, and like I was jacked up. What the fuck was that? We didn't know. This yeah. is the '80s, you know. I didn't understand that. And then I become a, you know. And then later on, as I learned, I'm like, I was, 
Oh, because we didn't know what we were getting. Sometimes it was sativa. Yeah. Sometimes it was, it was indica. And that's yeah. why I was like, wow, why was that one so much more powerful? Dude, the first time I got high, I was seven years old. Wow. That's it on, young. It, it was on accident. Uh-huh. My dad my dad was a pothead. Oh, okay. Uh, but, he would, he, but he looked like Bill Lumberg from Office Space. You said that with great pride. It sounded like you said my, my father was a coal miner or something. Yeah. <laughs> My was dad a, was a pothead. My dad was a and his father re-erratic. was a pothead too. Well, in, when we lived in Virginia, um, which is where he was from, that area, and that's what, he's my stepfather. He's not my biological father, but he's the yeah. guy that raised me. Like kind of like the Sam Morell story that he told to Adam Carolla. Um, um, well, in the basement in that house, uh, we had in the corner. We it was all brick, and we had a fireplace that he had some dude do, and then to pay for it, he gave him his motorcycle, and I was pissed, a little seven-year-old, because oh, yeah. I used to ride on that with him. Why, your motorcycle's gone? Well, your mom kind of wanted me to get rid of it, and I used the paper. <laughs> oh, anyway, he had a little bar on one side, and he had Doobie Brothers were playing, or Pink Floyd, or uh, Fleetwood Mackey, you know, that kind of shit, late 70s, and I would use that brick wall to practice. I was a very good soccer player. And one of the reasons was, was just hanging out with my dad I would just practice by, he's, the music's playing, he's soldering stuff because he worked for Dictaphone. He was uh-huh. a service repairman for Dictaphone. I so, Dictaphone, yeah. yeah. And uh, little dictation machines and the yeah. reel-to-reels. Dude, it had that met, funny microphone. It had that used to, band that went through it. It was like a big magnetic band. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. check this shit out. The, I, end, I didn't know this, realize this, but you know, before I got into radio, which was on a lark because of him, well, 10 years previous, he used to service the, the machines, the reel-to-reels at DC 101. Oh, wow. When I was a kid, and I didn't even know that shit. He actually met Howard, Howard Stern. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, which is weird because then I end up in radio, and, you know, and it, actually I was just told him, I just, I said radio because he, he wanted me to go to school for something. I didn't know what, I wanted to be a bowler, professional bowler, which he had been. And he was like, no, but you got to have something else. But I didn't know, I didn't want to waste his money on a school that I didn't Should really want to do. Right? Huh? I should have. Cryptozoology. <laughs> I did later on. <laughs> that sounds kind of scientific. But anyway, I just blurted out radio just to shut him up. Yeah. And then I ended up in radio, luckily well, cool. with some, you know. So it was a lark, but it's funny that he actually used to work in radio too. Mm. Um, anyway, the point is, he used to be soldering stuff and he'd be getting high. He had, his, he had his weed. I never got into it, but I saw it and I knew, it, and I could, yeah. I knew the smell. But yeah. I, one time he had some shit that was really strong. Because he, well, I'm just, you know, using the, the brick and wall back to, then, to there, practice my, really with my soccer ball. It really wasn't that strong. Mo- well, no, no, not, right, you right. Could, you could polish off a joint. But apparently this was, I believe this, I believe he later on told me this was tie stick. Oh, yeah, okay. He's got some so uh, he basically, uh, you know, he hotboxed the basement, right? And everything's fine with me. I'm practicing. Mean, I was with my soccer ball. I mean, I was very good at soccer. I was basically, yeah. they wanted to take me out of the peewee league and put me up with the older kids because I was too good. Yeah. And mainly was because all the practice just hanging with my dad and using that fucking brick wall for using my footwork. Anyway, uh, and then watching him, because he was very athletic. Because like I said, he was a pro bowler and the ladies, I used to be a little kid and the ladies would just come watch him. Like, he's really good, huh? Look at all these pretty yeah. women. <laughs> it was great. Um, anyway, I go upstairs to do some homework. Mm-hmm. And the fucking, I'm looking at my book, I remember, and the, the faces are like coming out at me, and everything I'm hearing from the hallway, from my mom in the kitchen, all the, everything's echoing, and all of a sudden I start flipping out, right? Kind of like a little freak out. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Anyway, ends up calming down. I didn't know what happened. So I shoveled that away, thinking, I don't know what that was, whatever, never happened again. 15 years old, after four tries, trying to get high, and of course it doesn't work the few, first few times for yeah. some people. Finally, it works with a couple of uh, three buddies of mine, not far from here actually. And I'm and after two minutes of going, whoa, I'm finally high. Wow, it finally worked. Wow, wait, I know this. <laughs> I know this feeling. And I've my friends are going, and my friends are going, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I know this. Why do I know this? And feel, that's what happened when I was seven. I oh, was stoned. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Nah. My dad got me high on, on accident. <laughs> nah. And then I went, oh, that's why they got divorced. <laughs> I, I, was, I think I was 12 years old, and we were going on a fishing trip. With my <clears throat> brother, and it was my, my dad took all those guys out. My brother was sort of a, he was sort of a hippie, you know? 
and he brought his friend John McGarity out, him and John McGarity, and uh, they brought some mushroom or some uh, brownies with them. And uh, mm-hmm. I like brownies, so I had one of those. How brownies. long ago was this? This was shit. I mean, I that, fucking that, that shit, 40 years, 50 years ago. You know? Oh, back when they didn't know the dose, you really had to be careful. Yeah, so I, I, it's like I ate this, ate this brownie, and and uh, and and uh, yeah, there, there it was, you know. But I survived. Anyway, that's a totally so di- that's I started, a totally different lately, high. I started. I started. I did some did did some hallucinogens. I was doing some mushrooms. And um, oh yeah, but, the mush. Uh, yeah, yeah, mushrooms are something you know. And so I was I was I I was out with my friend Sof in the desert. Right, and and she's she brings these mushrooms out with her, and uh, so I said, hey, you know, how much do I owe you? Because I figured, you know, you paid for these, so I should pay you for the you know my half of the mushrooms, right? You know, and she says, Nof, there are people out there that would pay good money, and I mean really good money, to go out to the desert with you and do mushrooms. And I thought, you know, that's a career track that I haven't really, I haven't really explored Dude. that yet. You know, it's like, yeah, come trip to go with out the creator the of Carnival and have him do a bunch of like hallucinogens and see what he says. You know, that's hilarious. Uh, come yeah. trip with the creator of Carnival. <laughs> that is fucking awesome, dude. Uh, but, uh, and yeah, I, mean, I can come right off the wall. I'll tell you what, I probably will once or twice during this <laughs> little, this little he all. Well, that whole thing with the mushrooms and the healing part, uh, and, and not to cut you off, but that whole healing part with the Jesus stuff, that I witnessed it personally because of the, you know, like depression. You, you know, you talked mm-hmm. about depression and stuff. Yeah. Within at my, it was, I, I had done mushrooms a bunch of times before I did my first heroic dose, which was uh, seven grams. Dare I ask? What seven is grams. A heroic dose. Heroic dose, well, it, if it's. It depends on the potency, but normally it's five five grams. Five grams. Or more. Or more. Or more. And up to I don't the, think I've done I mean, I'll just if you go if you want to go there, I'm just gonna do some acid. No, no. <laughs> well no, no. Five grams or more, I found out, oh, that's where that's what now I'm in Oz. I'm in the chocolate factory. Uh, those those stories, those are other stories that are actually about mushrooms. I might be writing one right now. I fucking hope so because I'd love I've to see it. I've got a Christmas it. story coming out. That's right. Yeah. yeah, and it's got to do Christmas Carol, dude. A Christmas Carol is all about an ayahuasca or an ibogaine trip. <laughs> okay, stop. Just stop. We're not doing this anymore. No, we have to because the next Carnival, thing you're going to be telling me is that Moby I, when Dick my rewatch, dude. When I first like saw the, dude, the whale, looks kind of like when listen, a giant listen to me. I'm I have my I, I'm red I can, badge I, of courage. I can what, back is all there mushrooms this shit up. in red badge of courage. I have to go back, and I'll, I'll bet I'll find them. I'll bet I'll find them. All quiet on the Western Front. I found them in Outlaw Josie Wales watching that for the 150th <laughs> time last night. Oh, my God. Uh, no, seriously. Seriously, dude. Yeah. Seriously. I love this. Yeah. Um, I'm enjoying the hell out of this guy. When I, thank you. Sure. Uh, when I first watched Carnival back in the day, it was similar to how – now where uh i don't do netflix all year i only do netflix like a, a couple of months a year just to gobble something up and, and then i'll get it again if something yeah. that i want to see a new season of i'll yeah. wait and like i just you know i didn't have netflix for nine months i got it for a month just to re-watch three more times the last season of better call saul oh. um but same kind of thing right so back in the day when carnival was on hbo i only had hbo like four months out of the year so when i or a couple or a little bit here and there so when i watched it it was kind of chunky when i when i watched it right so we're putting it all together so it was and at that time i wasn't into the psychedelic shit i didn't know about ibogaine ayahuasca all that stuff yeah and not saying that you put that in there but so in my rewatch which is when it during my rewatch is when i said hey dude you want to be on the whip because, wow, all the synchronicities, because I'm looking at, yeah. you know, I'm rewatching it, and then I look up, I knew a bunch about you already, but then I started, I looked up more, and I went, oh, dude, we're both Leos, 7-Eleven. I'm the 11th, obviously. You're the 11th, yeah. Um, August 7th for you people who want to steal my identity. And, <laughs> Should I give them my social security card number? It's right there. Well, it's on IMDb. Yeah, let me tell you, let me tell you something about, about, about. Drugs and I'm carnival. Like First of all, at the time, sober. I was not doing anything. I was stone cold sober when I wrote Carnival. 
And I don't even drink booze much. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not Me even either. a beer guy. I just only on the whip. Every once in a while, you know, I find a really good scotch, you know, or something like that. But I, I was, uh, I was with some friends, and, and friends. Um, it was. It's a, a friend of mine runs a freak show. Okay, so they're going to have. They were they were doing a tent show um, in uh, San Bernardino. Or as we old guys used to go, San Berdu. I'm going out to San Berdu because my buddies in the freak show are putting on a tent show. So I'm going to go out to San Berdu and hang out. And um, They like meth out there these days. Holy cow. And so I go out there and what I find out is that this isn't just a random tent freak show. They're basically part of a huge weed convention. Right. Oh, the uh, but the, the the cup, the cannabis cup. That yeah, yeah. So the the yeah, entire fairgrounds. When I was a butt like, tender at the weed, it's like people were selling every possible like device and everything. Okay, and you got to go in, show me at the time you show me your weed card and and, and and the whole deal. And so, um, I'm with my friends, the bearded lady and the contortionist, and you know, and and um. And I'm having a good time, and and uh, it's getting kind of hot because it's San Bernardino, and I got on this leather jacket. Oh, you mean that said, way? Right. I said I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't go there. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this jacket off. It's so hot. I'm taking the jacket off, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this back to my car. And I said, would you keep an eye on my laptop bag because I has was working against the deadline on an episode of the blacklist blacklist okay so i owe an act you know they do read six acts up between six writers and i owe i'm doing the first act and so you know i gotta finish that and it's sunday and i gotta have it on monday right we're going into pre-production in a week you know and so i am um, i go out and i'm walking through the weed thing there's a guy there he's got these these purveying whatever he purveys oh one second. One second. You guys, I have an absolute I'm actually enjoying it. There was a day when uh, this would really drive me nuts, but now I don't. I don't my care wife anymore. was apologizing. Was fun. She never apologizes. Anyway, uh, so it must be. It's my. It's probably my soothing voice. It is your soothing voice. So <laughs> we go. So I go. I go to this table because I see he's, he's got these glass pipe. These weird glass pipes, and. Um, and I and I I go. Uh, he goes. Oh, let me. T here's here's some. Here's one of our new products. You know. And he, he gets this. It's like this goo, and he puts it in the bowl. And he he says, "Okay, don't don't inhale. Just let the pipe do the work for you." I'm thinking, what? Oh no! And I put my mouth in the pipe, and then he hits it. There's a. Bah! It's like it's an electric pipe, right? I mean, it's like I'm just going. I mean, I'm like I'm the guy who was frozen in ice in the '70s. I don't know any of this shit, and. And it's like, holy cow, you know? <laughs> and so this goes, goes in my lungs. <clears throat> so I'm now walking to the freak tent and I'm having trouble dad. navigating my way through this place. And lots of people are because there's guys, I saw one guy just doing tight circles and saying the Lord's Prayer. I mean, <laughs> okay. Get this, Wayne. Okay. Three people between me and getting back to the freak show. Three people walked up to me. Three people walked up to me and said, dude, are you Daniel Knopf? And I go, yeah, you created Carnival. That's my favorite show. Now, nobody walks up to me in the public. They don't, people don't know what writers look like. They don't know what, you know, these guys were so into it. They knew what I looked. They were able to recognize me on site. And I, I thought, wow, you know, I mean, this show really was big with the weed demographic. You know? <laughs> Wow, we really should have taken advantage of that when we were on. I mean, we'd been canceled for a few years by the time this happened, you know? So, Oh, yeah. those fucking assholes for fucking doing that, man. Well, you know, they, they're also the fucking assholes uh, that greenlit it to begin with. And who else would have greenlit it? I mean, I can't be mad at HBO. I'd but, never uh, done anything. I was an insurance broker. I, was, I mean, I'd never done any TV. But it broke records. It did it really broke well. fucking it did, records it did, and it stayed but the, it, just it, as good. It didn't go season, down. 
first season was like, and, and the, there was, I would only, I would, the only thing that I would level, say about the first season. It came up at the end of the season. Then, my only, my only gripe, and yeah. I fucking love Nick Stahl. I, I love, love Nick, Nick Stahl. Nick Stahl. My only guy. gripe was, it seemed like every scene, <laughs> He's talking like this and like, can we, can he, yeah, he's, you know, he's I dirty. understand he's like, what the fuck is going on? I know I've played I those kind never, of characters. I never noticed that. That yeah, was my he, only he does gripe. He a lot of mouth breathing. That was it. No, it wasn't this mouth breathing. No, it was like he was constantly out of breath from whatever. It was just, it was a lot of like, but maybe, I don't know if I did it again, I'd probably go see and I might think he went, Oh, he's like maybe like because of what he's come from and everything he's dealt with with killing people. If he, he yeah. other things, if he heals them, yeah. he's like maybe that breath thing sometimes yeah, is like the beginning of a panic attack. Heavy. Yeah, if he's doing heavy, you know, breathing, panic he, attack that we didn't know what were yeah. panic attacks back then. Maybe that was in his head. I don't know, but it wasn't that. It, it more seemed from the direction. It wasn't. I don't. It might have been him though. A little I bit. Think, you know, I think but that it, was my only gripe. It was fucking 24 what, great going, episodes of like, what the fuck? And then <coughs> and yeah, this whole time. Back and looking at it, okay? And remembering now. You got to keep in mind that first episode. His mother is dying. Of, and you don't know what the fuck. Why is she saying what she's saying? You know what would happen in the Dust Bowl? People would breathe and it would become concretized right. inside their lungs. They would they would Pneumonia-ish. Yeah, they would basically breathe so much dust and silicate that they would fill their lungs up and they would die from that. And that's what she's dying in the original episode. And so right. he's been exposed to that too. So I think, you know, Nick probably is a very young man. You know, I think his, you know, his, the, and I think he was co maybe conscious of it. Is that he's a little out of breath all the time because his lungs don't work. That so may, yeah, okay. You know? No. So anyway. It just, so, I, I mean, that's he doesn't only, do stuff arbitrarily. It's a very minor gripe. Yeah. I mean, that's like me doing Bill Simmons, you know, or, or uh, uh, Bill, uh, right? Is it Bill Simmons who does uh, the the sports guy who also does the yeah, movie? Yeah, it's like, movie it's like podcast. When you what are they doing? The with little their tiny eyebrows? nitpick. That's Why are they like always doing that it, with their eyebrows? The, the that? pit nick. <laughs> um, What's that deal with the eyebrows? But I just love that. Uh, what was her name? What's the name? The, 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 the lady that, that Stumpy. Oh God! Oh, that's what I wanted to tell you. What am I? I howled again. Cynthia, I Cynthia remembered. Editor. Cynthia Dude. Editor. Well, no, no. The alli um, alligator Stumpy, milk was what that was the it? one you? Oh, I remembered. So in my rewatch, I had to tell you this. I think I told you this on Facebook. I don't remember. Um, but uh, when uh, Stumpy's drunk and all of a sudden he's taking a piss and the elephant appears beside him and he goes, <laughs> "Good God, hi elephant." How you doing? That was a great I night. fucking oh, howled, dude. I have my my neighbor is like two acres away. <laughs> I'm sure he could have heard me howling laughter. And while I'm laughing, I remembered I laughed like this the first time I saw it almost twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. He, well, when the guy that came fucking out, moment, hi, the elephant. elephant trainer came out. It was we like all, it was like it was a, almost like Arthur. It was almost he, it reminded me of Arthur Bach. Like, hi, he, elephant. He us all How you doing? Y'all rode that. Elephant. When the elephant was out on the set, we all went for rides on the elephant. Oh, was that in Simi Valley sometimes? Were you shot? It. Yeah, everything was. That was Simi. Oh, I worked out there on Saving Mr. Banks. You can actually see me in Mr. Saving Mr. Banks. They still when... use the house, Brother Justin's house. Every once in a while, I recognize it in something. Uh, yeah. Brother Justin, fucking we built Clancy, it. motherfucking two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Clancy Brown, one of the biggest badasses in fucking Hollywood. He's one of the nicest people in the world. I fucking and, love that guy. And you know what he does? He becomes sort of the de facto, you know, kind of, kind of, um, you know, he'll, he'll come to you and he'll say, yeah, you know, the actor, this, this actor has a problem with the scene. You know, they're a little concerned about this. And you might take a look at it, or, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, um, I mean, the, the the thing is, it, it comes back to bite him in the ass. Like we, on the first season, we finished, and then it, like almost a year went by before we got green lit for the second season. It was like a well, night, shit. Didn't you know? like seven months go by after the pilot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy. They they, but it was a, you Sorry know, it yelling. was it was a crazy show. Farted. And so we're sitting there, we're sitting there, and we're going like, it's six or seven months, and we're wondering whether they're going to be picked up again. And Michael, um. 
is is you know th- is Michael's reps are you know renegotiate trying to renegotiate his contract you know um, and you know my, uh, Michael played Samson right little guy yeah the, the guy who paved the way for Peter Dinklage to be a star of an HBO show yeah just saying yeah so Michael was they were in the process of trying to renegotiate a contract. I get a call from Clancy, and he says, "Yes, you know, I understand that I can't do Clancy's, but I understand that uh, that Michael is trying to renegotiate his contract." And you know, and I know normally you wouldn't do this in your second year, but you got to think about it. There's not a lot of roles for a guy like Michael. You right. Know, this, is, this may be like the last thing he's going to have to live on this. He may have to live on this for a long time. And so, and he's such an important part of the show. And he's really going to bat for Michael. And I said, well, I said, I, I'm not part of that. I'm not involved in the negotiations. That's some other EPs and that's HBO. And I have, no, I have nothing to do with that. And uh, but I'll you know, put a word in somebody's ear. I said, but I think the main thing is, I mean, you know, he's being paid already a huge amount of money. And Clancy goes, how much? <laughs> And they, my reaction is exactly what your reaction was just then. I said, look at you. Yeah, you'll go to bat for the guy as long as he's making less than you. Won't you, Clancy? <laughs> he's going, fuck you. Fuck you. Dude, that just made me come in my pants here. And Clancy did that for somebody. Oh, I Clancy fucking, does shit like that all the time. He's the most stand-up guy in the business. And I'd, if I could cast him in every show I ever did, I'd put Clancy in it. Because he's just a great guy to work with. And he's like one of us. He's not, you know, one he's of my favorite. One of my favorite things about him was uh, he's always been one of my favorites since fucking Bad Boys, since the, the original Bad Boys. Him and Sean Penn. Oh, he's been in, in my book since fucking Buckaroo Bonsai, dude. Well, that I, was after, wasn't it? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. No, Bad, Bad Boys. Around. Bad Boys. Sean Penn, in 1979 or 80. Oh, Sean Bad Penn. Boys. Yeah. Sean Penn. Yeah, yeah. Would have been well after. Yeah, that. yeah. That was where yeah. I first learned for who he was. So. Anyway, uh, and then I do get into radio, voice work, blah, blah, blah. And then my stepson and I get into the uh, Spyro Dragon video game. It's the last video game I ever played. It was, this uh-huh. is Super Nintendo shit. This is, wow, this, yeah, this is 25-ish years ago. 20. Nah. Anyway, we finally, I win, we win the game together. And then I'm like, oh. wait, no, watch, look at all this new artwork. And as they're showing the, we won. And then we didn't re- I didn't realize there's this, all, this whole new, film almost you know with the credits where uh-huh. it's going through all this shit that you've never even seen before all this newer stuff but it's with the credits and all of a sudden one of the voices the voice shit's coming up and i'm like what clancy browns did fucking spyro dragon as well how long is this <laughs> guy's resume gonna get this is night this is like 2001 <laughs> and i'm thinking how long how long is this re- guy's resume gonna get honda. it's only gotten it's only I'm tripled a, since I'm then made a lot of bedroom honda Dude, yeah, man. Great. Oh, voice. yeah. That, and Mr. Oh. Crab, man. Yep, Mr. Crab. Yeah. And that's the other thing with uh, yeah, my daughter and I with the SpongeBob stuff because I used yeah. to do that. I used to do SpongeBob voice. You used for to her. do Mr. Crab for my daughter on the set when when we so. do Mr. Crab for Mary when she was about seven or eight. That is so. She funny. had to meet all. She had to meet. She had to meet Pee Wee Herman. Mm. When, he did his last movie, and I, I, I'm really good friends with. with I think uh, she just heard you tell her tell the story. He, well, I'm good friends with 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 uh, Diane, who played the girl who looked like you got France. one horn coming out. Remember? Of Say that um, again. I was busy. The, the, the uh, um, Diane Salinger. Diane Salinger played um, uh, Apollonia, who was the woman who was in the. In Carnival, she was right. in the coma. The, the she also Clea's, played Clea's mom. the girl who wanted to go to the, the waitress who wanted to go to France in the original Pee Wee movie. So she was, she's really tight with Paul Rubens. And I said, God, you know, I'd love to. My daughter's now in almost 30, but she had, it'd be great if you could get us on the set. So she, my daughter met met Paul Rubens. He was in full costume, had the whole thing on. And she just, she just totally geeked out. Like she didn't know how to talk to him. She was like, it's like, come on, Kathy, you know, or come on, I, I, I'm calling her Kathy. It's my daughter, my wife's sister's name, wife's sister. 
what am I, a Mormon? Um, <laughs> that is my, my daughter's name is Mary. I'm going, come on, Mary. I mean, Ma Mary's a podcaster and she's a really successful podcaster. She produces these, you know, the, these true crime things for, you know, 2020 and stuff. And oh, so wow. she's been around some pretty, she's been around the Obamas, you know, and, Oh, and, I get a story. And, and, and I go, and you get intimidated by Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> wow. Well, you I got know? two stories. I got two stories to share for that. Um, I meet uh, when I was a fan of the Ron, you know, the Bennington show on uh, Sirius. Yeah. Ron Bennington, the comedian. Yeah. Um, originally, uh, he was part of a, a radio, a big radio show in, in Florida, uh, based out of Tampa called the Ron and Ron show. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was kind of like stern, but better. Yeah. Funnier. Way funnier, faster paced, lots of, uh, it was great, right? And I became a fan when they premiered yeah, in we Miami. We almost have to go Stern pre-divorce or after the divorce. Oh, it was it's... pre. It was, this is 90s. No, what I'm saying is Stern was funny pre-divorce, but after the divorce, not so he went, Yeah, when it turned into a serious corporate twat. Fuck that yeah. guy. I hate yeah. his guts. Oh, I can't stand it. I hate him. It's so sad. It's gross. But anyway, um, yeah, he sucks. And I used to, so I'll get to him in a second where. <laughs> I'll, so get where uh, I'll get around to I'll get around mother, to Howard Stern. That motherfucker. Um, Hold the phone here. Ugh. I'm going to take that guy down. Uh, what a hack. What a fucking <laughs> hack. All he did was talk over everybody. His interviews weren't that good. If you go back and listen to him, he's talking over everybody. And he's, and he's, he's, uh, he's cutting them off when they're getting into good shit. He's a cunt. Fuck him. <laughs> anyway, point is, um, so, uh, I take a day off. I'm a painter because this is before I get into radio when my dad's like, I don't want you to paint all day and think you're going to be on the pro bowling tour. Come on. That's why I want to get before I do this, though, my girlfriend, I take a day off of painting because uh, my bosses knew I was a big Ron and Ron fan after they premiered in Miami, Fort Lauderdale. And mm -hmm. this is after I moved from Maine down to Fort Lauderdale when I was in my tw in uh, my late teens. They premiered on uh, in Miami because they, they went up. They were local and then they had their own thing where they syndicated themselves and they ended up growing into like 16 affiliates across the Southeast. Mm -hmm. But in the early days, one of their first, uh, affiliates was Zeta in, uh, in Miami that I used to listen to. I'm driving to, uh, this gig that I have that's an hour and a half drive every fucking day to and, uh, to and from down in, down to Kendall painting this, uh, parking garage. I was on a swing, swing, uh, swing stage painting the outside Holy of an 11 story parking garage. Wow. Um, but driving down, I was used to hearing at 6 a.m. You got young to do shit like that. Oh, man. yeah, especially with the safety harness that I had back then. It would have snapped my, I would have snapped. I didn't, it wasn't a real harness. It was just a belt. If I'd have ever fallen, oh, man, I got stories about that. But anyway, just, I'm trying to stay focused <laughs> with the writer that's really, that, you know, he's actually a writer. He's the one that can actually stay focused. That's why I can't write because I don't. Oh, I'm good. That's why I do this. Focused. That's why I do this. Yes. So, uh. You're uh, a performer. I'm I'm uh, expecting at 6 a.m. to hear Kimba, one of my favorite jocks on Zeta, come on at 6 a.m. and have her morning show, right? But all of a sudden I hear this. At 6 a.m., all of a sudden I hear the Letterman music, and I hear this gay voice going, coming to you live from the Ride and Ride Studios in Tampa, Florida, the Ride and Ride Show. And it's Fez Watley. I learned that this is Fez Watley, uh, who's since passed. Um, he's one of the parts of the show. And uh, this whole thing, I'm like, what the fuck am I listening to? What the hell is the radio? What's going on? Because they do, you know, back when radio shows would, yeah, that quiet could help. Um, when uh, when uh, things would flip, they wouldn't announce it. Just all of a sudden, no. you tune in and it's totally No, because different. you don't want that person to, like, steal carts from Right. The, yeah. That's how yeah, it yeah, used yeah. to be. Yeah. But you, I don't want to, you don't want to say, look, you're going off the air at midnight tonight. So, right. you know, on your 1130 shows, you should go ahead and announce that because people would just get drunk. I got a I got a friend I got a friend. Stick your head out the window. Say you're not going to take it anymore. You know they go totally Howard Beale on. Uh, I, had on that. That. I had a friend who did that. I had a friend who did that. That's a different story. Oh, and it was a chick too, and it was oh, so cool. Yeah. It was the coolest thing she ever did. She was also a Miami Dolphins cheerleader. Anyway, uh, um, we went to radio school together. Uh, I got another oh, L.A. story, Synchronicity. Then we get cast together. I don't even know it. I get cast for a movie after I move into L move to L.A. Oh, another story. Sorry. I got to tell you this now. I got to tell you this, Synchronicity. You're, you know, at this point, you're interrupting yourself, interrupting yourself. I know. That's what this podcast is about. You oh, should okay. see when I'm by myself. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm really polite. I'm not going to interrupt you. 
I'm but just I know, sitting here. But I know, I know, but I yeah. know you'll, en- I know you're enjoying this part. I know you'll enjoy this. So I go to radio school with this girl in 1994, separate story, right? In uh, 1994. And then we know each other with blah, blah, blah. We keep in touch. And then she goes off to be, uh, after she does her Howard Beale thing, and then she goes to Atlanta and then she's on in Atlanta at nights. And at this point I've moved to Nashville because my ex-wife was a, she got a gig as one of the VJs on CMT, so we moved to Nashville, and I would drive to Atlanta for auditions. That's how I got Dawson's Creek. Mm-hmm. And, well, I went north. Well, my agent was in Atlanta, but I used to Atlanta for yeah. a bunch of things. Uh, Runaway Jury, I went originally yeah. was in Atlanta. Uh, anyway, um, and I hear her on the radio. Then we end up talking, and like, holy shit, blah blah blah. This is great to hear, come catch up with you, blah blah blah. Then I moved to LA. And then my wife just grabs a thing off a of Craigslist and, and submits me for a short film, uh, an independent short film on, off a of Craigslist. I go to the audition. The dude gives it to me almost right away. Yeah. And uh, he goes, oh, and uh, so I said, so who are you uh, looking for? Who's the, my wife, who's going to be playing my wife? And he goes, well, I only have headshots for two that I'm thinking about, uh, but I like the one that I don't have a headshot for. But here's the other two. And I went, oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. oh they look, eh, they seem all right. Whatever. I don't know anything. I'm I'm yeah. decent at this time, but I'm not, yeah. you know. So anyway, then uh, a few days later, he invites me to his place to for a reading um, with him and, and his, his DP and, and the girl, and she's going to be there. He says her name is Susie. Okay. Well, I'm sitting there watching with his brother. I'm watching his last film with his brother. Uh, he's a, he's a, he's a, from Israel and this uh-huh. black and white thing that they did. It was really, really good. And I'm like, all right, this is going to be something pretty good, I think. And then knock, knock, he goes and answers the door. All of a sudden, I hear this voice behind me that I recognize. I'm like, what the fuck? It's Susie, the girl that I went to fuck, the Miami Dolphins cheerleader that I went to went radio to school radio. with in 1994. We can cast his husband and wife in the first Speaking fucking thing I do in L.A. Stunt? on camera. Sounds like a candid camera stunt. Is it fucking weird? That's the synchronicity shit that I talk about on this My podcast. My favorite candid camera stunt was the one where they call the guy for a pizza. And when he or when he when they open the door, they bring him in, and they're on stage. At, and part of the play is somebody delivering a pizza, and he's in the play with the actors. And there's an audience. <laughs> no, that's like, I never. That's that's genius. Oh. They had another one that was really simple. Like they, you know, these some of these pranker shows, it's a lot, they go to a lot of trouble. And then there was this sort of zen elegance to the old candid camera show. They had this thing where they had these spoons that were rigged. Where it looked like a regular silver, like like cutlery, you know, like stainless steel cutlery, but basically the head of the spoon would dissolve in hot water. So they had these shots of people in various like cafes at the counter, stirring sugar into their coffee and then pulling the spoon out. And the head of the spoon is just gone. <laughs> I said, "That's genius, man." Another one they did is they parked two cars too close to the car in the middle just to see what the person would do to get in. So you'd have all these ladies like putting sliding window down on, you know, on their Buick Roadmaster wagons and climbing in dressed up like, you know, June Cleaver, you know, clambering into the back of their car, pulling their groceries after them. I mean, (laughs) it's cruel, but it's so easy. I mean, it's like (coughs) stuff. It's just simple. Yeah. Ever since I was a little, ever you since know? I was a little kid, and I feel like everybody else feels the same way. You kind of, and there's many times you feel like you're, uh, and that's part of where God comes from. Is you feel like you're on the Truman, you're you're the tr- you're you're Truman, yeah, right. Um, yeah. And then as if you are, become a tripper, oh, I never finished that fucking story about the heroic dose. Finally, after <laughs> a bunch of little we'll get ones, back to the heroic and then dose. finally, boom. Oh, I first I have to do the radio thing. Um, but that whole thing with the more you become, the more you, and I only do it. People think because I talk a lot about mushrooms, they think I trip all the time. It's yeah. like once a year, if that. Yeah. Um, well, that's all you can really, yeah. I mean, if you're doing mushrooms, I knew somebody who did acid every day. It's crazy. And, and, and it's like. It's silly. And, 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 yeah. And you have to start upping your dose because. It yeah. Just but you work. can't do that with mushrooms. You have to double your dose every day if you try to do that every day. Yeah, five I'm, grams. I'm, if who, I did six, if I did five grams tonight. And then I tried to, and then I tried to get that same high tomorrow night with five no, grams. That's not it, it would, I would need ten. Yeah, yeah. and that's the well, good thing. And, and you, and you don't need it anyway. It. Yeah, you I don't need it. it after a good trip. I I only need to go to the chocolate factory once a year. <laughs> um, but it's important. But um, what I'm meaning is, 
as the time has gone by as a tripper that I've become, uh, the more that Truman Show thing really comes to light, but it also becomes more of a spiritual thing to where, yeah, but then it comes, and then I turn it to the Alan Watts of saying that, remember, you're like, uh, you're always looking in the mirror, like your eye is backwards, that whole thing that works backwards. Yeah. In truth, this seems like Daniel's all the way over there in, in uh, Florida and Wayne's in Maine. Ooh, I love the rhyme. Love the rhythm. I am a drummer and a bass player. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, you're always looking in the mirror to remind, to, and that's a helpful reminder to remember that whole thing about we're all one, actually. Yes, it seems separate, but in reality, the real reality, we're just, we're all, we're look, you're always looking in the mirror. You're looking mm -hmm. at yourself all the time. Mm -hmm. I think, I, think I look at myself as seldom as possible these days because I look yeah. at myself and I go, holy shit, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, you dude, know, man, I mean, dude's dude's age on the phone, gracefully. It sound no. like I'm 17 years old. And, and, no, and I'd say, I'd say you, I'd, I'd say you look, pretty, wrapped around you look this, pretty fucking badass compared to when uh, you were yeah, a little heavier, going for the, when you were heavier and, and with longer hair, you look yeah. cool then, but you look cooler now. You well, I'm kind cooler. of going for that Islands in the Stream. Heavy, 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 <laughs> Ooh, a little Kenny kind of Rogers vibe. reference. Yeah. My first concert. Yeah. Kenny Rogers, yeah. Eddie Rabbit, and Sawyer of, Brown. Speaking of syncopation, um, <laughs> it's all sorts of syncopation. But uh, God, what was it? You, you used to be brought something up that was really. Um, Got to go back to that. Ah, fuck thing. I can't remember. Yeah. You know, my mind just goes. Oh, 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 oh. You were talking about Charlie and Chocolate Factory. And it, it's like. I got to tell you about writing this book. Now, not the book that you've got up on the thing. The Stupid Writer Tricks is really weird because Stupid Writer Tricks, I'm not a journal. I'm not a, I, I don't, I don't write in a journal. I don't keep a diary. I'm a writer. I write stories. And, um, but when I was breaking in, I thought a good way to, I, what I did was I created a site called Unmovies and I posted all of my first acts of every screenplay I'd written. And this is back around year 2000. Are those still on Noff.tv? Um, I'm on Noff TV. This was this was. Oh, the, but that, your link is, by the way, in the description right at the top. Yeah, yeah, Noff TV. Every, Noff, everywhere the podcast is. TV, And all the things that I've done and all the things that have gotten done are on there, too. And if you want to learn how to write a, a, a sales deck, that's a good place to take a look. But anyway, so I, I, um, I had written this thing. Um, the only part of my life that I really documented was probably the only interesting part of my life, which was where I transitioned from being a health insurance broker who at age 42. Oh, yeah, we've heard from that a long time ago. A, he being a showrunner on, on an HBO series, okay, <sighs> is a very weird thing, you know? But I, I went through all that thing of going to meetings and fucking up at meetings and mistakes I made and and what I did right and what I did wrong. And so I was doing these, these, it was a blog, but there was no such word as a blog back in 1999. And so I was blogging and um, that went away. And so later I kind of resurrected one for my Gingerland site on, on, and Sub I said, Hey, this is just writing advice. And my daughter read it. She said, you know, you ought to put you, that was really good. That was a good article you put up do you have any more of them? I said, yeah, I got like, I got a bunch of them. She says, well, you ought to put those together and uh, put them in a book. Cause it, you know, and so I said, down, it's a good idea. So I, I, I put them all together and they were all basically written as I was breaking in. And so the, it's not me remembering what it was like to break in. It was very present it is okay. Here's, and you can see that in it, the, the mistakes I made, the observations I make, in it cool. um, and uh, but that book the reason i put that book out is i was planning to do another book which i've i've already written but is on substack it's a substack serial so i'm posting a chapter each week on substack and gingerland that, right gingerland and so i was going to do that as a self-published amazon thing and um so I thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to do stupid writer tricks to make all my mistakes on this. So if I, if, if, as far as sale, selling and, you know, going out there and doing promotions and that kind of stuff. And what I found out is, yeah, you get like a big fat royalty um, if you do a Kindle book. But if you want to get 
anybody to read it. You've got to spend like a lot of money to, to promote. And so in a yeah. way, it, even though you're getting like a really skinny royalty from say a, a, a standard publishing house, they've forgotten shit that you don't even know about how to sell books. And so, um, so I'm, I, I'm kind of rethinking the idea of, 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 of you know, of that, but in the meantime, Gingerland was my, one of my best friends in the business is Tracy Torme and Tracy Torme is Mel Torme's son, right? Mm. Tracy created sliders. Tracy was one of the top Slide. writers. Ooh, Jerry Star O'Connell. Trek Next generation. Tracy, Tracy worked on Saturday night live. Tracy's had the most amazing career of anybody in the world. And, um, then his dad was Mel Torme, the singer in night court. Yeah, yeah. And the Liza Minnelli show, <laughs> he produced that and he had some stories. Um, but he he wrote a song. He and a, he and a buddy, um, his co-writer, went up to Lake Arrowhead and rented a, rented a chateau. And they life. decided they were going to write, uh, they were going to, and it turned out it was the hottest, he, a bit worst heat wave ever. Like the drape, the, the, the lake was just dried up, you know, and it was like, so they're in Lake Arrowhead, it's sweltering and they decide, Hey, why don't we write a Christmas song? <laughs> so the two guys get together and they write chestnuts roasting on an open fire. That was they written write in Lake Arrowhead. That song in Lake Arrowhead in the middle of a heat wave, right? Duff McKagan and, had a house on Lake Arrowhead. Yes. And, and I thought, Guns here's this song, you know, it's like been... 50 years or something when people still sing it you still see people doing covers of it and i'm and every christmas and i thought wow you know that that's really cool like that's cool i want to do something for christmas i want to do a christmas project but every fucker's had a whack at that that that's that's a patch of soil that's been leached so dry there's no nutrients going hacky. back to dickens i mean dickens was working that he all ibogaine forward. I mean, I've again, it, ayahuasca. Yeah, they've it goes worked the Christmas that. past. You put it in carnival. <laughs> they have worked the Christmas patch of soil so thoroughly. It is so completely leached of nutrients that now, you know, the only Christmas we go on are Psycho Santa slaughtering his elves. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's so true. They have to get totally made up with this stuff because they can't do a sincere Christmas. And I said, no, I want to do something. <laughs> that's fresh that nobody's heard before and it's sincere, you know, cause I, 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 you know, and, and so I, and I want to celebrate certain things. I want to celebrate what we all have in common. I'm tired of people shining a white hot spotlight on things, on the differences between people. I, there's things, those are angels dancing on the heads of pins the differences between us. It's almost nothing. Yep. We all admire courage. We all, we all are grateful and admire kindness. We, there are, there's, when I see somebody doing, when I see a group of strangers getting together to throw buckets of water and push a whale off a beach, I'm astonished at how amazing my species is. What other species does that? Yeah, I don't man. see a group of fucking monkeys helping the whale off a beach. I don't see, you know, the, the sharks will help the whale off the beach. <laughs> You mean lawyers? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, so, you know, and, and I, and I love people. I really, I think the only 10% of people are, 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 are assholes and, and they make life kind of shitty for the rest of us. And of those, maybe 1% of them are like real psycho psychopaths. You and know? they wouldn't, and those assholes that you talk about wouldn't exist if it wasn't for capitalism, which is a parasitic system, <laughs> which turns most people into No, because shit. they were total assholes. In the Soviet Union, too, there's well, no, assholes well, everywhere. Absolutely, you can't fix that. Wayne. Yeah, you can. There's, yeah, you can. No matter what system you have, trippers assholes aren't assholes. Will always be there. Trippers aren't assholes. I know assholes that are trippers. They ruin They're everybody not real trippers. else's trip. They're Have not you real been trippers. With one of those assholes? They those harsh your mellow. They're the worst. Those aren't real. You know, the guy who walks up to you thinks he's funny. He's going. That's not You're a real that tripper. Guy. That's that a cunt. An asshole. That's a cunt. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's a cunt. So, okay. What was I, saying? I can't remember what I was saying. I don't okay. know, but we're I'm having doing fun. This thing, and, mm. I, and I'm going. Okay, I got to do. And so I came up with this story. 
And it was like, it, I don't get it. I, I got attacked by this story. I mean, usually stories take me, they, they sort of, you know, come up. Uh, here, this is interesting. Then I kind of set it aside, think of something else and think of something else. And then, okay, well, this one's ready to go, you know? So I have five or six in play and then one's creeping up. And it's like, okay, I'm about to break water on this one. So here it goes. And this one just went boom. It was like, I had the, all three acts, bam, 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 bam. And, and then I looked it up because I said, nobody's, I can't believe anybody's done this before. It has to have been done before. Um, my heroes were gingerbread people. And sure enough, nobody had done that. I was like, are you kidding me? So I, I, I did this Christmas story called Gingerland, okay? And then it was really the, the other chat. First of all, you, you know, you, you'd do a fresh Christmas story, right? Right. <laughs> you know? And then I'm going, okay, what voice am I using? Because, you, you know, when you work on TV shows, you become a chameleon, you know, because you're working for various writers, you're working for various showrunners. You want to sound characters. like them so that they don't have to do so much work on the on, on their end. So you, you try to, you know, so you, you get good at mimicking voices. You become an impersonator you know, on, pay, on the page. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. There you go. <laughs> um, so... I used to do a killer rod serling, but I don't think I can do them anymore. So that, <laughs> picture yourself. Anyway, so uh, the uh, in a world where laughter world. was king. Yes. Um, so that that's me. My life is like kind of been, yeah, flash panning, expecting to see Rod Serling standing mm. in. So anyway, I, I come up with this thing and it's it's like, oh, well, I'm writing this to children, so I have to use uh, I have to, you know, make it understandable to children. And so I have to sort of that, that, take. and then I, that's not working for me very well. I don't, I've got my voice. And so, and I realized, oh, wait, this isn't a book to be read by children. This is a book to be read to children, which then puts me into, and I've done full circle to the Roald Dahl territory. And I realized, oh, those are all the writers that Roald Dahl, C.S. Lewis, those are the writers I remember as a kid, even Dr. Seuss, you know, and, and it's like, they were writing as much to adults as they were to the kids. And so, and so that's where, where I took this thing and I yeah, came out with something that I was, I'm really, really proud of. And I it's hope like to, I'm writing a book proposal and I'm going to take it to regular publishers. I'd, I'd love to have this be something people read every Christmas Eve, you know, um, cause it, it celebrates all the right things. And can I uh, do the, can I, can I do the, the, um, can you, can I have the gig of doing the audio book? The book on tape. I hear the audio book. See, here's the thing is I think that kind of defeats my purpose because if they've got an audio book, see, I want people to read this out loud. But do you, do you understand the amount of emails that I get, messages that uh, that women send me about, wow, you make me tingle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want women tingling. Over the, story about <laughs> the, the, the hell you don't, <laughs> sir. Pervy, pervy, That's your book. You the want them tingling all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> jingle, all, jingle bells anyway, all the way home so, to fucking order that shit on amazon so yeah if people want to check it out and they go to substack look up gingerland they'll find it there's but, a link is there a link off on your uh, from your normal website i don't know if there's a link on my page but it's pretty easy to find just type just google substack gingerland the first entry will be that and because you're yeah the first 14 chapters are free check it out and, and if you I've want read to read a bunch of it the book it's like five bucks a month, which is par for the course for Substack, and um, and I've got a lot of I've got like I've I've got a lot of subscribers. I'm doing okay with the subscribers, and and um, in the meantime, when I'm not posting, I'm posting about you know the process of building it. I just hired an illustrator and found out. Oh yeah, you don't want to cheap that up, you know. No. You don't want to you don't want to get that fresh student out of you know film school to do that. You want to get somebody who's been at this for a while. So I got an outstanding illustrator, um, and uh, and 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 the, and so I'm going to have this beautifully illustrated Christmas book, hopefully coming out this Christmas called Gingerland. And I mean, my heart, my soul is in this thing. There's a, I love this book, and um, and I feel like we need things like this book, you know, just things where we just feel okay about ourselves, you know. I'm tired yeah. of finding, I'm tired of 
I'm tired of people telling me, oh, yeah, you're world destroyers. Oh, well, my God, you're the world's worst thing in the world. You know, I mean, we're a plague on the face of the earth and we're this and we're that. And then, you know, at the end of the day, we're fleas on an elephant's ass and the world will get along just fine without us. And when I hear somebody say, oh, we're destroying the planet, it's like, well, oh, come on, it'll bounce back. It's been around. Oh, yeah. It's been around for hundreds but of it'll, millions it, but of years. It, I'm well, sure it'll they, recover from whatever damage we do. Well, yeah. It. Well, no, that it will, but we won't. Yeah, because <laughs> it'll. See, that's it'll, the thing. It's we'll that's be the, the wipe deal. off to yeah, clean it up. Well, that's the deal. It's that's like, okay. see. That's the thing is some people they get it wrong. Now they're. I see. No, the they all there. get it wrong. They say you're destroying no, no, the planet. You go. We no, are. Just, we're making the planet inhospitable to us. That's the right. planet shaking us off. Like the planet going, Well, okay. not, that's what I mean. That's what no. I mean. That's what I'm saying. What you just said yeah. gets confused. Some of the people that you're talking about before, though, are those people that or that's what really they're saying, but their words get kind of it's fucked kind up. Of rain there, there's rain. more. I think more people are like me and you, what you just said. Yeah, we're the ones fucking up our own way of living here. The planet's going to be just fine because it's going to say... Get the yeah, fuck off because you keep doing this shit. shit. It got hit by a big meteor. It killed all the dinosaurs. It bounced back from that. Did they really exist? Oh, come on. I, I don't even believe the <laughs> moon landing. Have you seen landing. 65 yet? Dude, I haven't. I don't even believe the moon landing anymore. Have you seen 65? Was that a movie? It just, it's on. Yeah, it's it's new. It, it's with, uh, oh God. What the hell? It sounds familiar. Yeah. Oh God. Why am I going blank on his name? Because I love him. He's a great actor. Uh, I, I, yeah, it does sound familiar, but look it up. Sixty-five. You ever get a computer? Go see it. I got a computer. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're sitting. We're both sitting right in front of one. In front of a fucking computer. Uh, I, I'm flipping over. Really, I was. It was about a guy who's a spaceman, and he in spaceman. Yeah, he's spaceman. He's transported. <laughs> All of a sudden, you know what popped into my head? Marty McFly standing over yeah, his uh, dad with the fucking with the hazmat crazy. suit, hitting Van Halen, <laughs> uh, they, uh, telling him to know. write. Telling him to be a writer. Yeah, Telling well, him to like, be a writer. Uh, we gotta recruit we, we gotta we gotta recruit seven intrepid spacemen to be in the Apollo project. And you guys are going, spacemen doesn't work for me. We gotta come up with something. How about astronauts? Astronauts. That sounds almost celestial. Yeah. Oh, I'm an astronaut. Well, I'm a but psychonaut. Spaceman sounds like something out of a fucking comic book, you know. You can't be spacemen. But I like spacemen. I think Spaceman needs to come back into Vogue, you know. But anyway, who is? Oh, 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 spa oh, there it is, sixty-five. Yeah, uh, fucking Adam Driver, one of my that's favorites. That's it. That's it. Adam Driver, wonderful. One guy. of my favorites. He's fucking so Adam great. Driver plays the spaceman. Awesome. He's transporting a bunch of guys to some colony, and he, he ends up getting there's this meteor that's this errant uncharted meteor, and his ship gets hit by. It. He ends up doing a like an emergency crash landing on this planet that has no idea where they are. It's off the charts. It's off everything. And it turns out that he has crashed like this podcast. on earth. And, you know, but it's 65 million years ago. So it's okay. kind of like a it's, planet of the apes where it's kind of like it's bounced in yeah, time. Yeah. Well, no, he didn't go through time. He didn't take off from earth. He's from another planet. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. Right. So this, he just happened like, he, he happened to have landed on it was a planet very much like ours, but you know people look like us. But he landed on Earth, right? It's sixty-five million years ago, so he's dealing with dinosaurs, and these are not nice dinosaurs; they're like even meaner than Jurassic Park dinosaurs. And he's got this little girl; he's got to protect her. She's the sole survivor besides him. And it's really good; it's a good movie. But you know, it, it's like it's like it's like the big thing that comes up is he goes. Oh, well, you know that 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 sort of that the, all those asteroids that I went through that wrecked my ship. That is the asteroid that's going to hit Earth that kills all the dinosaurs. So that's the ticking clock the guy has. His computer's going in twenty four hours. You know, for now, there's going to be a, uh, uh, there's going to be. A, oh, I didn't know that part of the story. Yeah, so it's like I got to take off before the 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 you know the hit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the extinction level event occurs, um, but it was, uh, it was really pretty good. I, I enjoyed. Heard, it. I, I read mixed. I, I saw mixed reviews. Like I, was it Dan Merle? I, I watch on on YouTube. These you know what I look these at? These geeky at, movie reviewers. If if it's good, here's what I love it. You go on you go on Rotten Tomatoes, and if the critics are up here and the fans are down here, it's a piece of shit. Yeah, and if the fans are up here. And the critics are down there. 
it's It's probably one of the greatest movies you've ever seen. So that's basically my thing. If they're even, it means that it's something you'll feel good about having seen because I believe it's around Christmas and there's some meaningful shit in it. But at the end of the day, you'll forget it. You don't care. Not like the whip, though. You'll always remember the whip. But oh, but seeing how you're talking about that, the whole thing with the Christmas thing and the story and the feel-good stuff, <clears throat> talking about Dickens' doll with uh, the chocolate factory, those are all psychedelic stories. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, and I don't where, know. I don't and, know if and it's also the Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. The tornado is the come up to where is the come up that twenty that fifteen twenty minutes of where everything starts well, to change and you're like, Frank whoa. Bong, who wrote- and then all of a sudden there's it's colorful and there are little people. See, listen, when I trip, when I do a heroic dose, I found out what the leprechaun means, the 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 oompa loompas, the, the the little people, all the little people in all the stories. Are you sure I you haven't done it. DMT? No, no, I've never done DMT. I don't know DMT. how you can get there. It must be a Listen, heroic dose. It has to be a heroic dose. Heroic dose of mushrooms. Leprechauns. Heroic, yes, because this is what usually happens. Like, but this is what like, happens. I don't like, see them. Mushrooms for me are sort but of you, like you don't see them. acid light. It's like... it's Well, because you haven't done a heroic dose. No, I've never done a heroic do, dose. Yeah, well, hook yourself up and do it right. It's all about set and set. I don't well, fuck around with it. Well, you ever get down it. to Florida? Let's do this together. I'll come up to Maine. We'll just... That would be the most awesome thing ever. <laughs> Dude, there's a clip. There's a fucking promo. Yeah, man. I would trip with you any fucking day. Um, yeah. Obviously, now, we obviously, we would be good tripping together. Um, but here's the thing. Here's yeah. the thing. What was I just going to say? Shit, My shit, wife will shit. kill me. She gets very upset. Are the, you going the, the, to go oh, to one the of your mushroom parties? Here, right? Here's what it is. Here's what it is. What happened, I, which I found this on my first heroic dose, and it's happened every t- ever since which has only been like seven or eight since the the first heroic dose. Like I said, I only do it once or twice a year. That was like, yeah. yeah. And it's, well, no, I'm sorry, seven or eight, more like, no, more like Um, 12-ish. Ever since that first one, what happens is somewhere in my peak, it's usually after after the come up, which is the twisty part of the Mm -hmm. chocolate factory before he opens up the door and sings the imagination song and there's mushrooms everywhere. (laughs) Anyway, uh... Or the tornado for the Wizard of Oz, or there's always a come up thing, which is that kind of weird thing, and then boom, and then you're in your peak. Yeah. And uh, and then when in my peak, when my peak starts, I learn that I have to have a roll of paper towels because I'm my I'm gonna the the tears of forgiveness that Bill Hicks talks about, uh, and then everybody you know those tears of forgiveness yeah. those start coming. I have to do this, and I yawn for like five minutes straight to where I start to worry that I'm gonna get lockjaw. Wow. Uh, happens every fucking time, and then and then a few minutes after that, all of a sudden I hear, I hear a bunch of giggling from like little people on my shoulder, oh, wow. and just like and it's not scary, it's fucking oh this is awesome, it's like a cat right. like licking are. my fucking neck, right? You're and back, just, and you're back. Yes, it's been so and long. It, the first time it happened, it was like I know this, kind of like the high thing before oh, the, the weed thing. Um, because it's our natural religion. What's here? What we're supposed oh, to be doing. Here's, here's, so here's the thing. Yeah. So just like when you have a twitch in your eye, and when you have it, and then as soon as you look in the mirror, it stops. Same thing to where as soon as you turn your head, oh, it's gone. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> that's the fucking leprechaun. The gold, in, the, the gold, the pot of gold is the trip itself. For the healing I'm to know feeling, that, oh, that's I'm right, we're like all I'm, one. I'm this is all like a it's game. It's, 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 this is all an episode of Star Trek where it was the Western one. What's the Western one? The fake thing. What was I the feel new? like I'm trapped in a, I'm suddenly in a, a dorm. Like this is a dorm. Like this is a dorm conversation. Did, did you, did you see, uh, oh, I'll tell you something about, on back to Gingerland, not that I'm, you know, but I just no, want to right. say, I'm going to hear this through the Wayne filter. Okay. Uh oh. The story of Gingerland is Holly, Nicholas, and baby Jim are ginger siblings. They're three little cookies. They live in a place called Gingerland. Okay. Gingerland is this winter wonderland dominated by the by the by by the ginger mountain house or Gingerland Mountain House, right? Mm. This huge sort of hotel that Who's everybody gonna animate in. this thing. And I have no idea. And it's it, going to be you awesome. Know, and, they, and, and gingerbread people are doing little chores and they, they sing carols and it's always Christmas in Gingerland. 
always. It's right around Again. the Christmas is always right around the corner in Gingerland. And so they're up at the top, top of the farthest hill in a gazebo and baby Jim falls through a, a, a hole. In one of the boards. It's a, a rabbit butter, hole. It's a, no, it's a butter brickle floor and it cracks and baby Jim falls down this hole. And so then, you know, being the brave one, um, Holly goes dives in after baby Jim and then Nicholas, after some consternation, jumps in after Holly and they find themselves digging their way through packing peanuts. A trinity. Okay. So it's like they're, they're, they're burrowing. They have to burrow through these styrofoam peanuts, right? It's packing peanuts. <laughs> Okay, and then they find a door. They what? find a little. They find a little what? hollow part. They find they Jim find Morrison. A door, and they have to push hard. Sorry, they get the door it. open. Right, Hacky they all client. have to. They all have to push together, and the door opens, and they tumble out onto a big rug. They find themselves in this place that is like a, an absolute duplicate of the ginger uh, the gingerland mountain house in every detail except it's not made out of gingerbread it's not made out of candy it's made out of like wood and stuff it's like and it's giant it's ginormous okay and and they're looking around and it's like they try to get back into the they they they're they, they're like trying to figure out what's going on and, and so they they climb up onto a chair to get a better look at where they came from because there's this big box like a skyscraper above them. they can't see anything and they see that gingerland is a display in the lobby of this hotel and that's where they've lived their whole life <laughs> i just came in my pants okay that's twice in one podcast <laughs> you're good sexy so anyway so they realize that the place they're from is in, and it's in the lobby. It's basically a duplicate, a gingerbread duplication of Russian doll story of the what what's it's of this hotel that they're in. Oh, sorry resort. for saying Russia. It's sort of like the Mohonk Mountain House. It's, it's better place. It's up, it's upstate New York. It's this Victorian hotel. And so they're they're inside there. And before they know it, they hear this horrible sound. Boom, 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 boom. And this big giant woman comes in the room. And she's Millie, the killer maid. She comes in, she's she's vacuuming, but they don't know what a vacuum is. And they see her vacuuming up all these all these styrofoam peanuts. And she sees the doors open and she closes it. She locks it with a golden key. And the whole story is about these three kids. You know, they end up the the, the bad guy is 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 Crystal Klingendorf. And she's this horrible corporate creature who is working for this big conglomerate that owns the hotel. And now she's been put in as general manager and she's decided I'm going to impress everybody. I'm going to, I'm going to totally, Love I'm going to totally angle. like reshape this hotel. This is this mausoleum has been buried in the Catskills. I'm going to turn it into a world-class luxury resort. And like first on her list is I got to get rid of that cheesy ginger lamp. That's going to the incinerator, man. I'm going to huh. do something that's going to be spectacular. The they good find stuff in the trash. So, yeah. And, then, and they, Weird how corporate they, stuff they get that. chased by your cat into the wall, right? There's a mouse hole on the wall by the fireplace. They run in through the mouse hole and they find themselves inside the walls of the hotel. And inside the walls of the hotel, they discover a whole bunch of ginger people who fell out of Gingerland. And never were able to get back in. So they're kind of crumbly. Some are missing limbs. They're like, you know, they're old gingerbread people, right? And they uh, live inside the walls of the hotel in this place they've created called Ginger Haven, right? And they all they eat is candy and pecan pancakes and shit. Then so <laughs> <laughs> fucking diabetics. Yeah, no, you know what? Here's the thing. That's why they're, they're missing they're, limbs. There's songs. <laughs> the in it. Actual, if you God, I'm it, funny. There's songs in it. There's po there's verse. I've got a bunch of verse inside it. Dude. Just like Rob Dahl would do. And and what other people would do with these kids' books. And so I said, Oh, this is fun. I can do that too. I can stretch that muscle. So I have I have one where they the Mrs. Clin Mrs. 
she hires this this guy he's a third rate like window display uh artist in manhattan but he she runs with such mediocre people that they all treat him like he's leonardo da vinci so she hires him to come up with a new christmas display which is obviously going to be horrific right but his name is monty espinoza so you know and it's like it's like he's you know the the bad guys are the kinds of people you really kind of hate now <laughs> um but the the verse in it they mention oh this place needs to be pulled out like a rotted tooth and you know nicholas is going what's a tooth like uh. Like, I don't know what it, like gingerbread people don't have teeth. Right. So gingerbread people have never been to the dentist. They can't get cavities. That's why it's just all they eat is just stuff that's bad. That's why they don't have teeth. Because they, <laughs> they don't need they teeth. Don't eat, they're gingerbread people. They eat another, they've made they're, and they're all people of color. It just depends on how long they were left in the oven. Because, <laughs> you know, that's true of like us too, isn't it? You know, I, so, I mean, diversity is covered on this one. I got that, you know. But all I'm saying is, is if you, your listeners are going, oh, I don't want to read a kid's book. This really is a kid's book, as Wayne can attest to. I want you to run that through your uh, hero oh, dose filter hero dose. and tell me what I'm really writing about there. I already know. <laughs> Dude, I already said it. It's the Russian doll. It ends up being, come, go, goes all the way back to the um, anim, Amanita muscaria mushroom originating in so Russia. Ha- it's not a and the twisted. Russian doll, you're talking yeah. a Russian doll story or the Truman, sto- Truman Show story. It's a different version. Yeah, you yeah. find yourself out of what you Sorry to say reality Russia so much. into a completely new reality. And it's dangerous. It's a Fucking, dangerous reality. I, can, I was, dude, as you're talking, I'm, I'm watching it animated. It's got a bunch of different animation. It went from Bill Burr's, uh, Bill Burr's animation on his show mm-hmm. uh, to uh, Duncan Trussell on his on Netflix. Uh, I, I can't remember. All the, I want to do is I it was it was going in and out of different kinds of animation. When you when you mentioned the maid, the fucking maid from the Jetsons popped into my head. <laughs> dude, that's I was on. That's, that. Dude, and she's I, Millie I, the Killer Maid. There's Millie the, the thing, Killer I have Maid. a paper towel for what and I did in my the pants. And the cat, the vicious cat, is called Cuddles. Yeah. Cuddles. Of course. Of course. She's a hairless Egyptian, Ugh. you know, named Cuddles. Oh, how dare you do that to Cleopatra? <laughs> oh, how about that? You mentioned the Rotten Tomatoes thing? Jesus, talk about Holy never. Cow. You ever see one that's at one and one at, one at zero, zero at both? Well, I know Jada. She's a smart cookie. I've talked to Jada. Wow. Time in, That's time Jada's in fault. Jada. Jada, Jada puts the C in the C word. I don't know. I don't know. She doesn't. She's she's cool. She she's, is actually a very cool person. And I'm not just saying maybe. that. I don't say I that. Don't know. Yeah, you know what? Here's the deal. If I don't think she should have been cool the first person, person I don't to talk fucking... about. Well, I'm not going to talk about that. She is actually. I mean, I spent some time with Jada, and she's smart and funny. And no, I'm, I'm not saying yeah. she's not. Yeah, but you know, she this should have been the thing, first person to stand I think up what and happened, say that was wrong. Well, look, somebody talks somebody into cop rock, too. It's like uh, you get a little room and you get groupthink going, and it's like, hey, you know, they were on the African continent, so they could have been black, right? A little and, bit, of course. You know, they were and darker. this is a really cool way to sort of retell a story. And it, 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 you know, I think what happens is people sort of talk themselves into things. You know and what? I don't really think well, is this going to really work. Yeah. You know what? Being the conspiracy theorist that I am, at first, I went I, when it, when that first popped and I first learned about it because I wasn't going to watch it. I didn't even know about it until I saw yeah. that it was getting panned. Sorry to make you yawn. Uh, Sorry. We'll, we, we'll be done. I, I just the thought minutes. of watching it makes me yawn. <laughs> exactly. But so as I'm reading that and I'm thinking, wait a minute. And I just went through, I just rewatched, before I rewatched Carnival, I rewatched um, Rome. I watched Rome. You can see her on TV. Yeah, I saw somebody go by. Yeah, there she goes. Yeah. Um, uh, I was in, I I actually went back and tried to rewatch the Cleopatra movie with, after watching Rome, I I went back and tried to rewatch the Cleopatra movie with uh, Elizabeth Taylor. I don't think I got all, I didn't get all the way through it, but I was kind of like, yeah. I know that's casting. I know that bullshit, but I wonder. I don't know what's really going on here. But then when that came on, and then everybody started jumping shit, jumping her shit for the for that thing, 
I was like, yeah, that's kind of weird because that's what, and then I stopped and went, wait, everything that I've ever been taught I know is a lie, so maybe they're actually right, and I'm, I started to feel for them, even though I, I'm mad at her for not being the first one to stand up and say that was wrong two years ago or whatever it was now. Uh, uh, I was like, wait, I'm actually kind of behind them because I feel the same thing because I'm a Jesus mushroom guy. You know, that's like I said, I'm one of the reasons I've been single for a long time is because I say Jesus was a mushroom. Even though people, even atheists look at me and go, that's kind of weird. I'm like, it's just a little mycology. And I wasn't the one that came up with it. It was one of the people that dis- that's transcribed the Dead Sea Scrolls. You're just an apostle. You're not. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I'm just a Padawan. Yeah. I'm never going to be a Jedi. I don't want to be a Jedi. I don't Who want that fucking responsibility. Jedi. I don't <laughs> want to. That's why I've never been a manager. That's why I've never been a boss. Nobody's ever. I've never been a boss over I've anybody. I've been a boss. I've had. I've done that. I, all you have to learn to, when you're a boss is you, you know learn how to. You just have to be able to make decisions. Speaking that's of that, that's one of the, things the thing I've is never... make sure you get people that are really good who are in charge of all your departments. And if somebody isn't good and if they're not doing their job, they're just making the job harder for everybody else. So it's time to fire them. This and, one of the- you know, that's pretty easy stuff. I mean, people used to go, oh, well, God, don't you feel bad when you fire somebody? And I go, well, depends. look, I mean, if on the that person. person isn't pulling their weight, that means that all the people around them have to pull their weight for them. And so when am I going to punish all the employees that are having to, you know, do the extra work? Or do right. I punish the employees causing all the extra work? Right. You know, <laughs> I just never, I never, I never feel good about firing anybody. I don't take any pleasure in it, but I don't, nor do I feel bad. I just, I never wanted to be in, yeah. I've never wanted to be in that position. But speaking of though, I never realized. When you show run, you're kind of stuck in that shit. You know, speaking you gotta, of that though, that's what I'm saying. In my, in my homework to do this, I didn't realize, oh, wait a minute. One of the questions that you've always wanted to ask, like when I first, when I met Peter Gould at the, on the, the, the Sunday, I lived in Studio City for 15 years right there. I lived yeah. right there across the street from CBS Radford. Uh-huh. I so love that. that. Uh, the Farmer's great, Market. That's a, that's a great studio. That little Farmer's Market every yeah. Sunday. I was there every Sunday because it, right, it was right in the back of my, right behind my apartment it's a good building. breakfast place out there, too. It was great. Yeah. Well, I met Peter Gould there, kind of the same thing where you bringing it back to where you were talking about uh, tripping and those guys going, are you Daniel Law? Well, I, I knew who Peter Gould was. I've been a Breaking Bad fan. I'm everybody. People that know me know I'm a super geek on Breaking Bad. Huh. And uh, I see Peter and his wife going one way as I'm walking the other, right in front of the big five. And uh, and I went, ah, do I want it? Because I'm not one that goes up and says anything. Like I don't take pictures. All I've, I've out of all no the people that I've worked with and stuff, like one of the only pictures I have with somebody else is like fucking Gary Busey because he was. In my when I did a comedy show, he was in the audience and he stormed the stage. Did you read my book? I have a chapter in there with Busey in it. Holy fuck! More synchronicities, ladies and gentlemen. You need to the read whip. the book. No, I have, which one? Which one? Writers? Uh, stupid writer tricks. No, you I haven't got it. When you, read that book. you said you were going to send me one when you got them. I'll send it to you. Did you send me? You sent me your address, right? No, not yet. Only okay, I got, send, you got my send email. Send me after the show, and then I'll send you. I'll sign a copy. I'll send it to you. Oh, fuck yeah. You're going to you know love I'll this read book. It. You know I'll You're read it. I'll read it. up when you read this book. Dude, yeah. I'll read chapters on the whip if you want me to. Yeah. I've read, I've written, I've read uh, chapters of Doug Stanhope's book, uh, Digging Up Mother on the, on the podcast. Yeah, you could do the, you could do the auto, audio version of this. I would. That'd be great. Know. I'd fucking love, dude. I'd lo- and I don't even care about the paycheck. I just want to do it just to say I fucking did it. I don't care about the money. I do care about the money, but I, I okay, don't. Yeah. It's Money's more about, good. dude. Because yeah. it's this. This is what I'm always looking for, and that's what this is about. And I can't believe yeah. that. And finding them is what it's about, anyway. And we found even more. But I was thinking. I, I, I didn't it, realize. I was Peter thinking Gould of doing thing. the auto version myself because it's my story, and I'm self told in the first person. Everything. Well, you're good it, for sure. No, How you've got a much better voice than I do. Well, we swap chapters. <laughs> Fuck that. Swap. Uh, no, uh, that's what Doug did. That's what Doug did with one of his books. He had Chad Shank do each. Uh, him and him and J- Chad Shank swapped chapters. Did you, his buddy did, Chad? Did you read? Did you ever listen to Carlin's autobiography? His brother does it, and he sounds just no. like George Carlin. No, George I never did. Carlin. Yeah, he sounds like a crotchety old George Carlin. <laughs> <laughs> that, to me, crotchety. to me, speaking of Stanhope, because he's his older brother. He's, he's, speaking he's, of Stanhope, um, to me, and Star Wars, to me, uh, Carlin is Yoda. 
Bill Hicks is Obi-Wan Kenobi and Stan Hope is Luke Skywalker until Ryan Johnson fucking killed him because Stan Hope's still alive. Hey, dude, I got a hard out. My, my daughter, my wife's going to start cooking. No, uh, to cook for the kids, and that's going to make a bunch of noise. 15, 15 minutes? Yeah, I think we got Because I, I like to take it to the half hour. My wife is Italian. She makes pasta and risotto. Dude, she's, so she's going to make the food for after our trip. And food after the trip but is, she's even, a, is so oh, great. She's a former athlete. She was a swimmer. And like most athletes, Stop, they really me hard. burn drugs. So if I like, I get I get high about once every two weeks. You know, I'm not really. You know, I usually do an edible, and it keeps me from you know yelling at kids and telling them to get off my lawn. You know, I mean, I, it keeps me from <laughs> saying get out of my chair. It keeps me from having a chair. You know, it's just like and and so it's medicine. I mean, it's just it medicine is. that keeps you absolutely. From being, and it was being, before big pharma being took an over. Being angry old person. That's and right. So. Um, every it's a better goes, medicine than alcohol she looks was for the old people the that we knew. She'll, she'll go, are you having a stroke? <laughs> I would get so hard. That's a terrible thing to say to somebody who's high. I'm, like I said, I've been... Watch. She's pointing at her watch. <laughs> like I said, I've been single almost 10 years. Here. That would okay. make me... We'll, we'll... Is she going to say hi? Oh, is... okay. Is she going to say hi? Come here. You need to say hi. You want to say to say hi? Ah, oh, be great. I've already no, had. No, the... no, she can't say hi. She's not dressed for it. She says the hell she ain't. No, she's not. Hot <laughs> Italian woman. I don't care what she's wearing. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Okay, anyway, so we got fifteen minutes. So fin- we got a hard out in fifteen to, minutes to finish those. Finish that one story with the Peter okay, Gold thing. Second. One second. You cut the really... part out. What? Okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wrap this up because we got kids to pick up. And this went much longer than I said it would, oh, or we okay. could pick it up later if you want to. We could do we, another. We could do a part two. I, I, part two I mean, uh, next week or something. I feel terrible about soon. this, but no, we, no I figured it's fine. We'd be, I figured we'd be wrapped by seven o'clock at the latest. Well, we would have been if uh, we didn't have this, this stuff from before, just to make sure that the sound was good. Yeah, I know. Well, that took forever. But I'm I was gonna. No, I had some stuff about because uh, I was sometimes I would yet. sit there. But sometimes I'd sit there uh, before I left California. I was like, maybe it's maybe it's the I like doing voiceover because I don't have to leave the house for the most part, and it doesn't take very long. But maybe how I belong in a writer's for, room. How are you for Monday? Huh? How am I for Monday? I don't know. We should. We should. But you've got a lot. I think we've been talking for like an hour. It's a, it's it's a, we're at an hour forty seven. I just like to have uh, one. I like to have nine. I like to hit the nose like network. Even though I hate clocks and yeah. I don't do commercials. I oh, you still, like to hit the okay. I so. still like to be at the thirty mark or the top of the hour, but it doesn't have to. It's, it's okay. just Rhea? You don't have to. We don't Why have don't to. Let's go pick up Molly. The girls are quietly playing. It's only twelve more minutes. Oh, they're in the pool. Oh, it's only yeah. twelve. It's only twelve more minutes. Uh, it's twelve more minutes. Can you call Molly? I can't do it, man. It's She's okay. alone. Everybody's left. She's alone. It's okay. It's okay. She has to go. And I've got to watch the kids in the pool. They're in the pool. Uh, yeah, go, go, go. That's okay. We can end it. I could just, we could, uh, we can. I, I could, I could just take you out to the pool yard. <laughs> anyway, no. Okay, oh, you mean the look. camera? Oh, take the whole thing. No, that's funny. Okay, look, dude. What we're gonna do? Let's we'll just, do a part two. Let's do a part two and give you enough to put it together so it's in the right, you know, thing. No, we're all set. No, I can finish. I can finish the next twelve minutes by myself. I usually do. <laughs> okay. I usually, dude. I've gone five hours all by myself. I feel before. terrible. I feel terrible. No, gonna, no, dude. I know you got right your own now. thing. I know you got your own shit. Don't worry about I it. I know. I gotta go. Okay. Don't worry about it. No, I'll it's been fucking soon. awesome, and I'm happy that you want to do. Look, a part I'd two. be happy to do this again, though. If yeah. there's anything missing or anything you want to cover that you didn't cover, well, there's a bunch I'll missing. We'll do it again. No, there's okay. a bunch missing. We'll do a part two and a few more because I'm oh, my next might, one's going to be might all. Consider finishing part one. We will. We'll finish it, and because uh, my next one's going to be all. Oh, he boy, he really bounced quick. Sheesh. Anyway, well, we'll put this up, right? Oh, that's I'm too small. <laughs> that's what she didn't say. Ha ha! See how I twisted that? I didn't keep it all hacky. And why is my light so fucked up and kept going in and out when it could, oh, because I was 
is because I was playing small. That's what it was. Because, you know, uh, it was acting. I was acting for the, uh, for the creator, uh, writer, showrunner, producer, showrunner, producer, same kind of thing, same deal. Of Carnival, that's who I was just talking to, but let's go back through. What, what, what did we not get to? Let's see, what did we not get to? I want to talk about how Clea Duvall, who was in Carnival, that was kind of neat how that rhymed. It's the whip, isn't it? Um, she was in Carnival. She was also in one of the other short films of the four short films where I met Dan. It was this organization that was helping to pimp uh, young filmmakers. And I got cast by the director, not Panopticon. In my reel that I've shown, I don't know which, which whip it was. I showed, I played one of my reels for a pee break, and there was some Panopticon stuff in there. You can find it on Vimeo. <clears throat> Ger Gerard Sue, Jared Sue, J A R O D S U is his last name. I've put the link in many other whips, I've mentioned it before. But that's where I met Dan because he was one of the mentors. There was Bill Marcelli who wrote uh, one of the Tony Scott movies with Denzel Washington. He was one of the mentors. There was a bunch of writers that had uh, successful writers that were mentoring these young filmmakers, writers, and directors, um, and helping with their budgets for their these four films. And then there was a screening for the four films. Our film wasn't even done, and I, you could hear me because there was parts. Jared brought a new cut that wasn't done, but it was better than the cut that they had. And he brought it, and they said, no, we have to play what we have already. And he's like, ah, oh. so he left. He was pissed. I stayed to watch with one of the other producers and was like, and, uh, and, and uh, Jaleel, who was in the film with me, the kid in, in the film with me, and you could hear me in the theater going, oh, every time there was a part that was not supposed to be there because it was a rough cut. And usually the us were at myself. It's some moments of myself that shouldn't have been in there because, like I said, it was a rough cut. Ah! <laughs> you could literally hear me. <laughs> Which was funny because then Dan, <laughs> later on as we go outside and they have drinks and all the stuff and hi, uh, and meet, like the beach or whatever, and Dan, nice work, bud. And I, seriously, and I was thinking, holy shit, is he joking? Because <laughs> there was some serious garbage on that fucking screen. There was mostly good, but it was, ah, uh, but he knew. You know, he's a, he, that was where I first met him. Um, so that was what? Tw what the fuck? When was that? 2013? No. 15? 16? 17? 16. 2015, 2016-ish. Whatever. How much time I got left? Eight minutes, seven minutes. Um, what did I not get? to, uh, I didn't get to his film, that he, the one thing that he directed that he makes fun of, which had fucking William Zabka from Karate Kid and just one of the guys in many other films, uh, and Dean Cain. He makes fun of it because it needs to be made fun of. I didn't bring up, he worked on uh, Supernatural. He wrote a couple episodes of Supernatural, one or two. I don't remember. So we both worked with, with Jensen Ackles, sort of. Uh, <clears throat> oh, and then the, about... I, there was a bunch of stuff I wanted to bring him. I'll, I'm going to ask him about again on part two with Carnival. There was a whole bunch of shit about how Carnival, rewatching it, there's a whole bunch of stuff that, that's like The Last Hand with me and Hankin that I did with Luke Pebbler back in 07, 08. This little web series that we did. Larry Hankin from fucking Breaking Bad, old Joe. Just look up Larry Hankin, last hand, The Last Hand. This link, I have it somewhere. I have, it's a bunch. Whatever. Oh, so much stuff. Um, oh, I wanted to tell him how much I couldn't wait for uh, Ben and Ruthie to hook up. Um, just like the first time I watched it, I was like, Jesus, I want these two to hook up. Adrian Barbeau, older lady, MILFs, and, and Nick Stahl's character. They have this little thing that might happen and finally happens. Oh, spoiler alert, episode 10. Um, or, and it's called Hot and Bothered. Cinderella song. Cinderella? Oh, we were talking about stories. Uh, 
I told him that the, the fucking thing, the, the show is like an Ibogaine or ayahuasca trip. I did say get to that. We both talked about being in the mental hospital. Well, I didn't talk much about it, but I just asked him about all of you. Uh, they made it rain from fucking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. Nick's character and Clea, when they fuck, it, they made it rain. It was fucking awesome. Oh, I forgot about that too, but I don't think... I don't know if I'd forgotten about that or if I hadn't actually seen that episode from the first run back in 20 years ago, whenever. I don't know. Anyway, holy shit. Five minutes left. Wow. I was speeding through that for some reason. Didn't, I thought I'd go, oh, I was going to, what, what did I not finish? I didn't finish the story about when he was talking about uh, uh, the, the whole thing about uh, starstruck shit. Where I was trying to finish the story of being a fan of Ron and Ron, taking a day off of work to go to the Ron and Ron, which I've talked about before, the live gig at, at the at the Hallandale, the Button South. And my girlfriend Carrie and I not even being able to get in. But then the next day, they had another appearance that they did, and we met Fezzi and Ronnie. And I was like, <laughs> and then three years later, I'm one of their producers. Synchronicities. And I was still, as one of their producers for the first few months, <laughs> every fucking day, it was like, am I really here? Am I really part of this fucking show that I used to listen to and fanboy about? Am I Kevin Smith? It's time to start crying. <laughs> I'm Kevin Smith. No, I'm not. Fuck that. Dude, he quit smoking weed. What a pussy. What a pussy. Corp, he turned into a turd. I get the whole thing with the trauma stuff. We've all got it. Boom. You should be talking about psychedelics, homeboy. If you really want to help people with trauma, talk about psychedelics because that's what really helps. And the proof is in the in the big fucking Willy Wonka, uh, uh, Scrooge, Mary Poppins, Wizard of Oz, Gingerland pudding. God damn, do I know how to put things together on a quick beat. <laughs> do I? I should be a rapper. No. Hey, did I tell you? Um, no, I didn't. I'm actually auditioning uh, on Tuesday for a, uh, uh, with a band that wants to do a Doors Hour. Oops, wrong way. I'm going to try to be this guy for a bit. No, I'm not going to try to be him at all. I'm just going to... Uh, Try not to dance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be try to be as still as him, so I keep all my energy for my voice, and I don't end up blowing it out from doing this too much and and using up too much energy and keeping it all for the vocal thing, so it sounds as good as possible, and uh, you know, and do a bunch of these, so you know, it gets even better. <laughs> what? When? Why? She's a ravenger. Gamora? Yes. For those that don't know the joke. What a fucking awesome hour and 50 minutes with Daniel fucking Knopf. I don't even want to make clips for this. Why would you make a clip? The whole fucking thing is a giant fucking... The whole thing is a promo. He was absolutely awesome. I was a douchebag for cutting some stuff off and not finishing some stories as quicker than possible. But it, we were all... It, it, he wants to trip on the whip. No, not on the whip. He wants to trip with the whip. Daniel Knopf, the creator of Carnival and writer of Blacklist and Stupid Writer Tricks and Gingerland and a lot of other things, he wants to trip with the whip. Guess I'm going to Florida. I guess the whip is going to take a trip. Boom! God! Jesus! You know what I am? Not a two-handed bowler. That's what I am. Fucking queens. I'm just kidding. I fucking love you, Anthony Simonson. I love you, uh, uh, Packy Hanrahan. I fucking love you guys. I don't love Jason, which is weird because I love Australia. I'm half, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an eighth Australian, kind of like how I am German. Zig when why? Zigzag. I love you guys. 
but you should have your own fucking association slash league, whatever you want to call it. Fucking love it. I ended it on bowling. Isn't that sweet? Because that's what we do around here. We mix it up a little. Hey, can't wait for Daniel Knopf part two. It'll be soon, but my neck, the next whip, it's going to be all about Mr. Hicks. Mr. Hicks. That's what it's going to be about. Anyway, watch James Corbett, Corbett Report, Jimmy Dore Show, Russell Brand, Kim Iverson, Revolutionary Blackout Network, but look for yourself. I'm just a fun babbling lecturer, obviously dabble it. Remember, we're all Neo, a.k.a. One. Sorry, I ran along, had to bump comedian Dave Chappelle. Thanks, Gary. Daddy loves you. Messing with my peebles. That's right, pops.